All right, folks. Glad to be back. As you can see, I'm wearing my traditional sombrero because I got doxxed by Mr. BBC. Mr. BBC, folks. Yes, he doxxed me, found out my name is Javier. But anyway, I'm here in my beautiful, beautiful land. I don't need to talk about nobody in America. These little kids in America, folks. I don't need to do that no more because I'm back in my land. I don't need to do that anymore, folks. Now, the thing is, Mr. BBC, Mr. BBC, folks, oh my god, oh my god, Mr. BBC, oh my god. ...over our countries, and there really is, there really is an obsession over our countries, it involves resources, it involves uh, genetics, and, involves, and also involves sex. That's a And, point. yes... And, and, and you see this you see this type of um, let's call it attitude or relationship towards our part of the world come strictly from black gringos or is it something you also see in say white gringos or other people? Yeah, white white Americans too. Same thing. I I'm, I'm hearing the same thing about them because they're pushing their stuff onto people from like our backgrounds as well. And how do you explain that? Why do you why why do the gringos, whether white or black, have this <laughs> dynamic relationship towards yeah. our part of the world and its peoples? Why do you think that happens? Because for for me, I, I'm trying to be honest with you about the Americans here. I think personally, there's something going on here because we're whatever it is going on between the white and black Americans, we're in the middle of this. We're, we're we're like the the porn website where you got the girl in the middle. You got one. You got a dick in one end, one and like in in your ass. You got a dick in the in front. And we're like, I don't. Oh, I don't. I, that's I, I don't watch. Us. I don't watch porn, to be honest with you. So, it's kind of well. You know. You know. The, 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 that kind of scenario. I understand. I, what you're I, to say. I have no idea what you said because my mind just blocked it out. Okay, you blocked it out, but yeah. the audience probably knew. So look, it's basically we're in the middle of this. So there's this white versus and, black. But why do you on. characterize it as a as a woman getting fucked? Because the thing about it is that if do you, you feel like do you feel uh, like a woman that's getting fucked? Well, do I feel like I get fucked? No, I'm using analogies for jokes. That's just it. That's a quirky joke, man. That's a weird, I know that. that's a weird joke but, to tell to a man you're just meeting for the first time. Just saying. Well, <laughs> hey, you know, look, man. You know, you're on YouTube. You gotta give some sort of something to the kids. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I understand that. I mean, I'm vulgar, you know, but man, yeah. I'm not necessarily sexually explicit. Well, you know, you know. Again, it's it's uh, it's it's part of the territory. So I'll, I'll try make it make it PG, make it simple. Don't worry about <laughs> yeah. it. You can use cuss uh, words all day, you know. But yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing. Okay, how about this? Um, what, 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 what I'm trying to get at, Kim, is if, if you could give me a theory, a cohesive yeah. r reason that you interpret. As to why this dynamic, which you just described in a very vulgar way, but I also yeah. can't deny the truth in what, in what you laid forth. Why do these people have this, I don't know what you can call it, like vampiric type of relationship or desire for our part of the world and our people? I kind of, it's because to me personally, it's because... I think here in the United States, you have white Americans and black Americans. I think both of these groups, I think they're so lost. I think a lot of them don't know what's going on. I think because they feel like they don't have a culture of their own. Uh, the family orientation is being deteriorated very dramatically. Yeah. Um, For both of them. Every, huh? For both groups. Both groups, yeah. I both of them. I would totally agree with that. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest with you. The people that the let's be, the, the, well, the you call the alchemists i call them the uh the rulers of the Angl the, the anglophone empire i personally believe whatever issues they have in this country the the self hate that's going on rampant in this country like particularly from white black americans like cuz there is a self hate stuff going on this the the, the, the falling of the family structure like it was yeah, not like like 80 years ago no um i think that's all of it's programmed 
completely programmed. Like it's like the debacle. They're in like in sheer terror. Like I want y'all to really understand what he's saying, right? All right. He's pretty much trying to say the white American men and the black American men have family structure issues. Okay, fair enough. They've got a lot of issues in their community. Fair enough. But um, he's saying that rolls over to the Latin American community. But I find it quite quite strange that the Latin American community, you know, Latin community as a whole, they've been have problems before they even landed to America. They've been had some economical structure problems. I mean, who doesn't in any community? But I find it quite strange that his rhetoric is just to target American men in particular. Okay. That's his whole rhetoric because we all know what he does with most of his videos when he targets American men, you know, they're trying to push the issues that are having between those two groups yeah. onto us right. and that therefore it's like we're the same, we're the same. Where in reality, OG, you made a very good point. Actually, a lot of black and white Americans, they actually relate more to each other mm -hmm. than, let's say, um, me to them, both of them. Regardless, or, regardless of your... Like the vein, I, if you were ever to replay or watch Extina's panel, because I did the whole whole 10 hour stuff too, like if you were looking at the call-ins that that she was allowing in if you were to hear these guys talk it was like this i don't know if you i don't know if you you did this but you need to look at it again this like desperation from the, because the, the thing is most of our audience is mostly african-american males so you guys understand this rhetoric right in this interview where he's going at right now okay so in other words first of all let's let me go ahead and show you guys Xtina about the way. Now, this is Extina, by the way. You know what I mean? So, shout out to her. I've been on the platform with her a couple of times on the Radical Latino show. I haven't had a one-on-one -on -one interview with her yet. But, you know, hopefully, you know, something will come down down the corner, by the way. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. The universe is colliding and all that shit. <laughs> but, anyways, shout out to her. If those of y'all want to check her channel out, go ahead and do so. But, listen, man. It's just the rhetoric behind kim's saying and a lot of people understand exactly what i'm talking about and, and particularly american men or men period or people who have a logical mindset at its say majority of them are african americans he says okay fair enough but see Here's the thing, if you talk about Afro-Latino issues, everything with African-American, anything like that, okay, and especially with the followers that Radical Latino have, it's going to bounce on to her as well. Okay, so what? They say some thirsty things. Okay. I'm a black guy. I'm not thirsty. Hey, Extina's is very beautiful, but hey. I'm not going to be the thirsty guys as you would put in that category. Most of them are black American males, as you would say. This is the type of rhetoric and the type of male bashing that everyone is talking about, Cam. Okay? You have this, pers this persona to you to where all your videos is related to pointing fingers and complaining. Because this is face it, man. We got to be honest here. Even Latinos are sick and tired of you because you talk about the same shit over and over and over and over and over again. You troll black men over and over and over and over again. Even your, you being a co-host, host <laughs> on this show, even the co-host had to question you about your sexuality because, hey, you kind of sound funny and suspect, especially, you know, comparing a... A man in the middle with, with, with some dicks hanging somewhere. I don't know what the fuck you just said. But this shit is kind of crazy to me, man. Come on, man. 
Yeah. The vast majority of her audience is mostly African American males because that's like her most of her base. So when they were calling in, like the for example, Ricardo, that guy, oh my god. Um, same thing with uh, there's other guys like Jamaican descent, like some of these other guys. Yeah, and, I like, would basically say it seems, not, it seems her audience not, is more like West Indian than yeah, yeah. the East Coast. Like that. Yeah, like that. Listen, man. Even your even the even the even the man. Even the guy who's who who's interviewing you, man, he even says that the audience seemed more West Indian, not really American or African American. So, yeah, 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 those guys, those guys. Listen, man. At the end of the day, Kem don't know the difference between different blacks. <laughs> he confused all black. Oh, you guys are all the same. And this is the type of rhetoric that I talk about. Not everybody is the same, Kim. Not everyone is the same. But that's okay. I understand why you do what you do. But we got to get into that. Let's keep on playing. These guys, they were calling in. They were like begging. Like, oh, but the Dominicans and the Puerto Ricans, they look like me, but they didn't want to talk to me. And I didn't yeah. know why. And I'm, I'm like, you know, come on, bro. We're, we're basically the same people. And I'm like, I'm like oh, my fucking. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my God, yeah. dude. The desperation from these guys. They're desperate to be clean. I'm, I'm, I'm not lying when I'm saying this. They're like in that Caribbean West Indies region, for example, they are so clingy. A lot of these countries in Latin America. Okay, now he's talking about West Indian people. First of all, he don't know nothing about West Indian people. So shout out to my West Indians out there. But, 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 but. <laughs> but um, I'm going to kind of give this 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 person a history lesson since I am West Indian descent. You know, so I, I think I can, you know, have the throne to do so. Okay. A lot of people from the Caribbean islands. All right. We don't go by American policies or American policies politics just like you would do in your own community right i mean you guys go by your own kind of rhetoric so the men in those cultures yeah they could be a little bit of thirst but you have to also understand that a lot of those men come from a different world so they're west indian they don't care about your rhetoric of what you think is thirsty and what you think is not. And, oh, wow, you guys are saying all this type of stuff to this girl. Oh, she don't want to hear that. Hey, oh, you're getting butt hurt because she didn't reject. Oh, she rejected you and da 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 Listen, if I was Extina, I would be rejecting that too because they're not engaging into what she's talking about. So, hey, hats off to you. I'll give you a point there. But here's the thing, Cam. Why are you two focusing on what other men are doing? There is an issue with you, man. And we'll talk about it very soon. Let's keep going. They're like, so they're begging to be, to be accepted. And that's why when you create the term like Latin America, they want to like, you know that guy Ricardo? He wanted to kind of like interject into that because I know what he was trying to do. Because therefore... If he gets in, all the French-speaking countries come in, and then all the Dutch people want to come in. Before I know it, because originally it's supposed to be 2020. I, I mean, we can sit there and say it was due to you know the the conditions here in the United States. I would. This is why I, and I understand. Their I don't. I don't care. I don't care. That doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> Listen, Ken, man, you're 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 a comedian, bro. You're fucking funny. You are a funny guy. It's funny that even the the your uh you being a guest on this guy's show, even even the the narrator, you know, even he he, he don't want to hear this shit, and he's Hispanic. Good God, Kim! It sounds like a bunch of whining and complaining. Okay, so this doesn't have anything to do with black. It doesn't have anything to do with white. It has nothing to do with Hispanic. Or Latin culture, or whatever you want to call it, it just has to do with the fact that you're B. 
bitching and you're complaining. People get tired of hearing the same old shit. They're still black gringos. They're still not just because of that sob story that doesn't yeah. put them in a position to be able to dictate to other African diaspora well, people what it means that, that, to be African. That, 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 that. Shout out to this narrator or the guy who's doing this video. Um, I don't know if he wants me to give his name out and stuff like that. But shout out to you. But let me just tell you something. If you do come across this video, I know Kim will probably feed your head with a lot of nonsense, a lot of bullshit. But I'm just going to let you know, man. Listen, I'm an honest guy. I'm just doing a commentary here. And it's giving my honest opinion. So this is not a disrespect. No point intended towards you. This is just my issues with Mr. Uh, Javier. Eric Romo. Has nothing to do with you. But just like this guy was saying. West Indians should not be. Controlled by anybody or African Americans. And, and telling them what they should do. And what they shouldn't do. Okay. I see what Kim is doing here. There's been issues between Caribbean black men and also African American men back in those early 70s. Those issues are squashed. Kim reminds me of the Christmas that passed, man, like the ghost or the boogeyman that's underneath your bed. That just wants to remind you of slavery and, and slavery and his rhetoric and his crazy twisted world. Even the guy, listen, man, narrator, I'm call you narrator because I don't want to say your name. I don't know if you want me to mention your name on my channel. Let me say narrator. You know who you are. Do not engage in this guy's rhetoric. This man has issues. You see it. Even though he's Latin, I get it. That's your solidary brother. But at the same time, this guy's promoting a lot of racism. You may not see it, but later on, I just give it some time. If he endorses a person like Antonio Bautista, then, you know. But, hey, maybe you guys all are in a clique together. I don't know. I don't know nothing about you. But, hey, I just don't like the picture being painted of black American men, West Indian American men, or any type of men. That's, listen, I am black. I'm from the Caribbean. I'm West Indian. At the same time, black comes first. We acknowledge that. That's what we are. When you talk about blackness or anything with black or even targeting or even bashing black men, I got a problem with that. You constantly bash as if black men don't have enough to deal with right now. You know what I mean? But nobody's really paying you no mind. I'm not probably the only black person that's actually responding to you, Kim. You make tons of videos, SYMBN groups. You go after red pillars. You go after MGTOWs. You go after white men. You make all these repetitive videos targeting these groups of men. But yet still, I don't see you have any solutions. All I see is a bunch of complaining. Everybody sees it, Kim. Everybody that watches your channel sees that you complain all you do is complain but you have no solutions there's a difference between me and you i point out the fuckery that goes on in my community in the latin community and white communities and all kind of communities we all fucked up we all got some issues even you but you don't see that. I understand that. You are mentally ill. And this is no disrespect to you. But mental illness is a disease. I don't even want to crack on you. I just feel sorry for you. Yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make. I remember, um, and I noticed this too. I remember Boyce Watkins, it was, it was a YouTuber, I did a video about him, and I had an issue when he started saying, yeah, I was down in Latin America and South America, and uh, he made like a little cheap shot, and I don't know why they're denial of their blackness, because they're, they're, they're more African than 
than we are. And it was kind of a very cheap shot kind of way so, saying so, that. So he, he felt lighter? Or he confused, that kind of thing. <laughs> it sounds like, it sound like he felt lighter than, than, that, than the blacks of Hispano America. It sounds to me like he felt like all oh, those fucking niggers and he felt like he's the white guy. Because they're more African than it's, him. It's a complex thing. It's it's. it's I don't know what's going on with hilarious. them. It's but like, it needs to be called out. That's that's the only way. This is a cultural war. That's what I was trying to say in the beginning of, of before everything. There's sex fetish. Yeah, you're, where, I, I, that's why I didn't disagree with you. I was actually. Yeah. You know, I never had put it in those terms, but there is definitely a sexual thirst. Oh yeah. Um. I I don't know if you watch my um. There's a video I did regarding uh, something like this. That's the main theme of my 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 channel. So that's we just talk about talk these about like, little fetishy channel. stuff going on. Little and there's a hidden stuff. stuff. You know those those evil guys. Those BBCs. They, those white men, especially those BBCs. They 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 got this fetish and stuff. As if I don't got a fetish for, you know. <laughs> stalking black men on YouTube. I started to hear them talk about how like we're gonna we're gonna claim them and then we can also say that we're partially part of them and go to their countries and like change the laws over there and like take uh, like land and resources <laughs> where we're, you know, are, because you know why? Because they see their community is dying. Yeah. Both of them like their community yeah. is like a disaster, is dying. Let's cling on to these people who are still alive. Let's suck the yeah. life force from them. I mean the, I, I agree with what So Cle so uh so oh god I forgot this guy's name. So Kim tries to uh put out this rhetoric that um, you know, we're sucking the life force out of the Latin American community. And this is why we're going over here. We don't care about our community. See, that is an excuse. That's an excuse for pushing his racial hate towards African-American men in particular and white men. But first is the African-American men because they're an easy target. It doesn't take a rocket scientist, folks, to actually see that Kim has an obsession. the bbc folks the thing is he's obsessed with our women now why do i care about other latin women instead of caring about mexican women it's because i'm a little racist folks i'm a little racist i care too much about mr bbc instead of caring about mr ppc yeah i care about mr bbc folks their, their community is all messed up, not like mine's, not because I live in the garage, in my parents' home, and they don't want nothing to do with me. No, that's not what it is, folks. That's not what it is, folks. You got to understand something, folks. You got to understand I own my own business, even though it's in my family's name and I have nothing to do with it. I still own my own business, folks. I still own my own business. I have no life. I haven't had a woman in eight years, folks. But it's okay, because I'm going to judge Mr. BBC, folks. I'm sorry, but I really you know one country of people that will definitely keep want the men. What? Uh, we, we, know, we, 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 know, we, won't, we know one group where they'll come in droves and they'll be like, oh, yes, please keep the women. This, the women can definitely come. <laughs> Yes, look at that good hair. Now, when it comes to those guys, oh, they'll come. They'll open the door. They'll open the, the doors of their community. In fact, they'll give you the house and everything. Oh, yeah. They'll, you know, they'll grab a, a, a random chick off the street and say she's a 10 and and say how she's better than American women and all this. Oh, my God. Oh, my oh my God. Now, now it gets twisted up here. You know, there's these guys on YouTube that started saying, hey, guys. 
it's a great market value now in south america is all these hot dog swelling girls and they're desperate and you get these prostitutes at a low price now even lower than the colombian girls oh my god and i was like wait what and then it says yeah i see even these colombian girls fighting over vessel over money and it's, it's a great time to be a man i was like they they you hear oh my god dude yeah that's for tomorrow that i'm going to show you because I, I mean i'm going to learn how to deal it I, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to get with a stag women or latinas because i don't oh, know yeah. Let, don't the, let, the men, let the let the black american guys teach you how to get with your own woman well then it's a white guy actually oh cool me. let them teach you how to get your own woman isn't that fucking crazy mm-hmm. they have to give you lessons on how to get your own women because i don't know so you say, yeah because you don't know them near near do you you don't know you're not you're not you can't tell them how to get a colombian girl so <laughs> you, you, you you still you gotta listen to these guys and if you donate and get in their classes, you can get spend over five hundred dollars a month. You too can learn the advantages of getting these hot ones. You know what? Here's that you have. I'm assuming you have a body, right? Yeah, I guess so. I, I don't know. Uh, 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 a a a booty. Yeah. I oh my. This is approved, but. Oh my God, girl, that booty came from Africa. I can definitely tell right now. Oh my God. Oh, and guess it, in a, a single. Oh my God. Oh, and she told me that I was adorable and cute. You know what that means, folks? That means she's put in the friend zone. So what does that mean? That she's available right now, folks. You guys shot with this girl because Miss, Miss trust me. This, this is adorable is and cute is the friend zone. I, I, you know how these kids in the mouse here say that, you know, like, <laughs> that one girl calls you cute and adorable, that, that, that me, the thought right there is in the friend zone. Womp, 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 All right, folks, let me get this down to here. All right, so anyway. <clears throat> yes, I'm going to judge Mr. BBC. Get your community get together. God, oh, my God, oh, my God. That's what these brothers say, folks. This is what these brothers say, folks. But this is a message from Kim123, a.k.a. Javier Eric Romo. All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I got my two special guests with me, Truth the Teacher 207, 2007, I apologize. And I got the one and only Radical Latino. What's going on, fellas? Hey, what's up, bro? Thank you for having me. Uh, no thank you, uh, thank you for, uh, for getting me on to this, uh, to this, uh, beautiful, epic, epic video that we're about to have. Right, right, right. So, t- truth, the teacher, I mean, everybody knows Radical Latino, you know what I'm saying? He's been on my show before. Truth, introduce yourself, let me know, like, just tell people where you're from, who you're all about, and all that other stuff, where they can find you at, all that good stuff. Well, I've got my YouTube channel teacher 2007 um i've had this channel since i believe um hmm, it's a good question it's uh 2013 i think or earlier than that i have to go look on my my uh first video and see how long ago that was um oh wait a minute 2008 i think hmm. it's- and suddenly 2008. I've been on here for a while. Um, basically, the whole uh, purpose of my channel is really dealing not exclusively, but primarily with people of the African diaspora and helping us to heal from the emotional trauma that we've uh, experienced you know, collectively. So there's a lot of information that's on my channel dealing with um, our real history and uh, just really designed to help us have a positive 
view of ourselves, you know, because there's a lot of alternative history that's out there, you know, a lot of people making things up. And my thing is that us as people of the African diaspora, we have real histories. We have real cultures. We don't have to make things up, you know. We don't have to yeah. falsify history in order to make ourselves, you know, look big for anyone. There's a lot of real stuff that's already there. So all of the information on my channel, um, actually, not that many videos, but in my playlist. My playlists are really designed to counter all of the negative stereotypes and narratives that have been um, hurled against us. You know, okay. things mm -hmm. like we have no history, like we've never contributed anything to world civilization, um, issues about our standards of beauty, particularly our hair, you know, the narrative of uh, black women can't grow hair or whatever, you know. So. so the things that are designed to destroy our self-esteem. Okay. Playlists and videos to counter those narratives. Nice. So let me ask you a question. Um. So where are you from? I mean, are you are you American or are you, are you African American? I mean, no, I'm not African American. I'm first generation of American of uh, Jamaican ancestry. I was born in the United States in. Um, New York City, actually, Manhattan. Okay. And I lived in Soundview, the Bronx, for the first four years of my life. And then... So we got three Bronx natives in the building. Yeah. Holy shit. And I went to Jamaica. I was raised by my grandmother and my great-grandmother okay. until 1976 when I came back to the States. And I was living in the Bronx on the Grand Concourse. Now, let me tell you something. You got to be the first Jamaican. Yeah. You know, it, it, except for myself, you know what I mean, that I had on the show. So it, it's kind of refreshing having a, you know what I'm saying, like a, a, a native, a home native person yeah. on the show. I don't get too many Jamaicans on here. So that's shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's very rare. You know what I'm saying? It's a rare occasion. Um, Radical Latino, you know. Introduce yourself to a little bit. Sorry, teacher. I'm going to get to Radical real quick. I mean, those of y'all, you know, because I have some new fans that's on here, too. Um, let them know who, who you are, where they can find you at as, as well. And, and by the way, guys, follow Truth the Teacher 2007 and also Radical Latino. But go ahead, Radical. I'm not. I'm. Not, go ahead, man. You don't need no introduction, man. You don't Yo, need... what's popping, bro? Thank you for having me. You know, BX all day. You know, BX yeah. will be next. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, we got the Bronx Warriors in the building. You know what <laughs> I mean? So you already know it's gonna be it's gonna be live. Uh, my name is uh, I go by the Radical Latino. You know, you could definitely uh find me on YouTube and any podcast that you listen to, the Radical Latino. Also, I um I became uh, I was awarded the position number twenty five on top of the fifty five most um uh, listened to uh, Latin podcast list. So I'm very I'm very you. thank you thank you I'm very happy about that. You know, uh so so with that being said, you know I'm I'm you know I'm doing my thing. You know my uh my message and my channel basically is about black and brown unity black empowerment and also uh trying to separate the european mindset that most of our latin people unfortunately so happen to be succumbed under you know so that's basically what my message is my whole I, channel I, is and all that I, I see you with the general hat man you, you yeah look like you I, I, i'm look i look like check forever you and there, you, yeah you there ready to bring the troops with you yeah aren't you? yeah that's right <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, you know i uh i yeah. the you know i come i come with a very unique uh different way of delivering my message you know, um, I, I do it entertainingly, but also, you know, I, I could, you know, I also switch it up and talk about mm -hmm. other, other topics, but it always revolves around the same, um, concept of white supremacy that affects all of us, you know? Right. Right. Okay. That's, that's pretty dope. Um, all right. So check this out. All right. Now that you two gentlemen on here, mm -hmm. you guys know, you guys know what you guys are here for. Okay. 
We're talking about Mr. Kim One Two Three. AKA. That's right, folks. Mr. King with two, three. Glad to be back, folks. That's right, folks. <laughs> Javier, <laughs> aka Javier Romo. Okay, yeah, Romo. Yeah. All right. So we kind of know our history, radical. What we have with Mr. Kim one two three. Obviously, you know my yeah. history. Yeah. Uh, Truth the teacher, two thousand seven. We yeah. had an interesting conversation on the phone. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're very close to Cam, or was? Uh, I was. Um, I, you know, I don't remember how I came across his channel. Um, don't be scared. Don't be scared, Truth. Tell him that you don't need him no more. Tell him you don't need him no more. Look in the camera and be like, bitch, I don't need you no more, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, I don't remember how I came across his channel. Um, hmm, you know, I have to think about this. How did I? It might have come as a result of like looking up DNA result videos, uh, because I was very interested, you know, like when people started getting into this whole thing about DNA. I was very interested about, you know, the DNA of the Caribbean as a whole, you know, and what it could inform us about our uh, migration patterns in the region, you know. Mm. And for some reason, which I still don't understand even to this day, the overwhelming majority of DNA videos coming out of the Caribbean happened to be Dominican. Mm. And I think it was from that, you know, looking at all these um, Dominican DNA video results, you know, of course, I don't know why the fuck I did, but, you know, you go down in the comment section and it's always a festival of fuckery and foolishness happening. Mm. So you would have these um, people who had very negative sentiments about um, Africans, Africa, and particularly African Americans. So let me ask you a question. You did say that pretty much this is how you kind of ran into Mr. Javier Romo, K aka Kim123, because you you found out through the DNA situation and you know, so you know yeah. when you go on these videos, you know, you always get I guess the algorithm mm. will throw up suggestions, right? So I think what probably happened was that I saw videos being suggested to me that we're dealing with the Dominican Republic. And then I'd see, you know, like his videos talking about um, black people in the Dominican Republic or whatever. And so, you know, you click on it out of curiosity and you see, well, you know what his videos were like. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with me, um, here's the thing that I, I forgot to mention. Um, I'm a former history teacher. Okay. I used to teach uh, history on the junior high and the high school level in the New York City um, public school system in the Bronx. Uh, oh. I left school teaching in 2005 for reasons that I won't go into here. He beat some kid after school. That's what it was. That, li <laughs> that little kid was me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> In the school and I choke your bitch ass out. <laughs> Ooh, I, I sense some tension going on here. Maybe I should be an impartial referee. We, we got we got history. See, the thing is, I threw I threw um I had a lot of chalk in my hands and I just slapped the shit out of him. That's why his hair I pushed his hairline Ooh. back. Oh, you know, shit. and but oh. now nah, he now nah, he fucked yo, he fucked me up too, bro. He gave me like titty twisters and all that, you oh. know. But I got I got the final I got the final wo uh, word because I got that motherfucker fired. That's right, you got no job. 
That's why he shows his bitmoji because he still has the scars. <laughs> hey, folks, you got no job. You just go on my uh, my video about the Olmecs on my channel and you see what happened between me and Radical. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, I, I still had the bug for teaching. And my very first video that I put up on YouTube was really dealing with the um, ancient Egyptian race controversy, right? Because... Um, yeah. Egypt is a place in the world that I've spent a lot of time. You know, that's the other thing people don't know about me. I, um, from 1988 until 2009, um, I was, you know, a frequent visitor to Egypt. So it's a part of the world that I'm very familiar with. And I saw a lot of misunderstandings about it, you know, this whole thing and I wanted to make videos to educate all sides in this controversy about what the truth was. And so, okay, so how, how how did you how did you end up coming across Kim? How did you guys end up, you know Or how did we end come, up Yeah, yeah. How did you guys come across each well, other? You know, I would go on his videos and you know of course I'd hear what he had to say and there was a lot of inaccuracy. Mm. And it was obvious to me that he was very ignorant about a lot of aspects of our history, mm. you know, as a collective, you know, and um, African Americans. And even though I'm not African American, um, I grew up around them. So did I. I know the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, and the thing about me is that. Whenever, because I have that um, that knack as a teacher, if I see inaccuracy, I want to correct it. I want to facilitate. Oh, when you say them, was Chem One Two Three part of them? No, no, no. This is way before Chem. But I'm just showing you. Okay. My, you know, the way my mind works and what my yeah. motivation for being on YouTube is. Mm. So when I come across Chem's channel and i see all of the inaccuracies that were being espoused about the african-american community my natural instinct to be an instructor and to facilitate mutual understanding kicks in so so in other I, words you were trying to help out kim because that's your natural instinct of being a teacher I don't know if it, I would say at that point it was helping him out, but to inform him and mm. to inform people who were subscribed to his channel about what the reality was and just offer points of view to consider. And um, I would end up leaving, like, writing Bibles. <laughs> and why is that? Because I have a lot to say. It's a lot easier to write a reply than it is to make a video. Mm. You know, because he's be long-winded as shit. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. It's good. Good. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to you in a second, radical. But go ahead, go ahead, teach. Yeah. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, hey, we gotta learn some ancient history, man. <laughs> see, we need to find out how Kim became who he is, if he had a Mr. Miyagi in the building. Since we're talking to Truth Teacher 2007, he kind of seemed like he was Mr. Miyagi. But go ahead, my bro. Yeah, so, you know, that's, um, you know, like I said, it's a lot easier to write a comment than it is to make a video. And because my purpose for being on YouTube in the first place is to educate, to inform and also to learn from other people, you know. Okay, so what did you what did you think you learned anything from Kim? Because we we I mean, no disrespect to you, brother. This is about Kim, right? So we got to talk a little bit more into like things that you saw within Kim. Did you think Kim was a person? Because you said that there was a lot of things that he was misled about. Did you feel like it's about history about? 
the culture of African Americans, the history mm. of African Americans, why they see things the way they do, in particular the concept of race, you know, because at that time he was really big on the whole, the, well, he still is, you know, like the race controversy about, you know, um, the way Dominicans identify. And it's not just him, but I notice a lot of people tend to blame African Americans for creating the one drop rule. And um, it's like you do know that they did not create this rule and they're not the ones enforcing it. This was something that was imposed upon them. And uh, look, whether you agree with the one drop rule or not, the fact of the matter is that this was something that was not created by them, for them. It was something that was created to be used against them, and it was enforced upon them. But see, here, here's here's the thing, right? I don't mean to cut you off. I just want to say this because I know there's a misconception within the, you know, I guess the Jamaican community, the West Indian community, because yeah. we also have, because one Jamaican to another, we know that there's some fucked up issues with us too. And there's a color shit going on too. Because there's, there's a lot of people that's yeah. in Jamaica that do feel that the whole thing with the whole bleaching thing, they yeah. feel like they have to lighten up their skin to get closer to being white. Once they come across abroad. Well, here's the thing with bleaching in Jamaica. This is a subculture. This is not something that is widely practiced. Yeah. There's a small subset of people. And um, usually in the lower classes in the ghettos, it's something that comes out of the dance hall scene. Right. Um, you don't find the average Jamaican bleaching. No, well, you don't. But I'm gonna. But I. But I will tell you this though. That there's also that I've seen within you know the Latin community. Yeah. You know how you have the New Yorker, New Yorkans. Yeah, and then you have the island Hispanics, yeah. like the the island Puerto Ricans that don't like each other. Yeah, and yeah. that's the same thing. That's the same thing could say for Jamaicans. Because to be honest with you, I'm a I'm a Jamaican. They would consider me as a Jamaican. They oh, wouldn't absolutely. Jamaica wouldn't classify me as their own because they'll look at me. They'll say, "Yo, you Yankee. You from New York? Yo, you a Yankee? That's right. I'm a Jamaican." Well, here's but the thing. I got I got I consider myself like. African American, but also Jamaican American as well, because of where I was brought up. You know what I mean? Because that's that's where I was born. Yeah. But it's like when I hear this rhetoric of Black Americans, right? And even in my community, it's like when people say the word Black Americans, a lot of people don't want to be associated by it because they look at it as like, oh, that's lower class. I don't want to be classified as that because on the mainstream media, we got to be real. They paint black Americans as being wild animals. And you yeah. even see it on worldwide news, even in Jamaica and everywhere else, even in the, these Caribbean islands, even in Telemundo. You see all that. You see that all the time. You see black people painted in a negative light. Radical Latino. Let me let me get your input on that, though, man. What you think about uh, other uh Black Caribbean black folks being um like what like bleaching themselves? Well, I mean, I don't know if you can if you understand that, but I mean, like a little bit fast forward to the the whole where we me and teacher was talking about uh um being separated or looking down on black Americans or the word black. Oh Ameri yeah, because uh let, let's be honest, um being black is kind of demonized all throughout the world, you know. Let's let's be let's keep it real, you know. And that's done deliberately. Um especially for black Americans, uh you know, they are uh, viewed and kind of put 
in a uh, media position to just be the ones committing crime all the time and the ones always committing trouble. So you're going to have these immigrants from these African countries or Caribbean countries or South American countries that already have a negative stigma of right. black Americans because of the media. You know, again, it's deliberate because the media is controlled by white supremacy, you know, so you're going to uh, you're going to have these type of people already have these negative um, stigma and, and um, already these negative attributes of certain group of people, um, even though um, all white um, even uh, even so, blah, 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 my, my, hmm. let me backtrack, even though white supremacists will still look at this these Caribbean black or light skinned folks, South American black or light skinned folks and African black or light skinned folks the same way how they're viewing black Americans. Yeah. But that's not being either told or it's not being shown to the, to the point that black Americans are being, you know, demonized in the media. So it, it's a, like a double edged sword. I do see that a lot. I'm um, talking about, uh, you know, colorism. That shit is heavy in South America, Central America, the Caribbean. Mm. That is very heavy, heavy. To the oh. point, to the point mm -hmm. where they have like little things like mejorando la raza, bettering the race, and that goes against back to the whole caste system, you know, of hierarchy of shades. You know what I'm saying? Closer mm -hmm. you are to white, let's be real, it's a psychological thing because so, the closer yeah. you are to white, the more protection you feel like you're gonna have. You know, there's a mm -hmm. plenty of stories of Latin women, especially for the women, Latin women bleaching their skin. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not it's not that so much. Latin, so in this Latin culture, they do the same thing too. Yeah, for the most part, they do. They uh, they be mm. bleaching. I, I um I think Burr Martinez even spoke about how she wanted to bleach her skin when she was younger. You, you know, know what I find kind of crazy though is that now that you're telling me this, you got black and brown people trying to bleach their skin while you got white people trying to inject their skin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This it, shit is just crazy. Yeah, because at the at the th the thing is, um, with us is more of a psychological thing where we want to get close to being more protected. You know what I mean? We want to be close to that upper class of you know. I don't want to get harmed anymore. I'm sick and tired but of it. Not white people trying to inject their skin. To well, well, skin why, skin well, let, well, white folks, okay. white folks, they do. Let, well, let's be let's be completely honest. White folks, they do that. Um, and certain uh, certain white folks, they do that because they know the privilege that they have and they don't want to accept that type of privilege. Mm -hmm. And they see the type of culture that black and Latin people have. So they want to go and adopt that type of culture, because let's be let's be completely honest. saying I'm I'm sorry that I'm going to even say this, but for the most part, white Americans don't really have that much of a culture. You know, so let me ask you something. Let me let me ask you something before we do get in it because we gotta kind of step on the topic with Kim now. Now with Kim's situation, right? Now, as y'all can see right now, he's got this heavy, 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 heavy artillery. It seems like he's trying to create a Dragon Ball Z Ginyu force. You know what I'm saying? Like he's trying to create an army of people to yeah. to combat. And go against SYBN groups, black men who travel, anything that black men that are sort of giving out useful information on. Now, I could just tell you this, right? Personally, I've watched a couple of Kim's videos to kind of understand, like, what his rhetoric is. I was trying to really get a grasp of things. But then I thought I did at first. But then I realized I didn't because it wasn't just about black travelers. It was about anything that black men were doing on YouTube that formed each other in regarding to uplifting themselves. Because it wasn't just black travelers he was attacking. Yeah, so I, I, you know. I, I do want to just uh, before because I know Truth wants to talk. Um, a lot about that. He has a lot of insight on that. Um, for the most part, what I see is that Kim, he uses black travelers as a smoke screen to go after black people. Let's keep it 100% real. 
Um, he uses those talking points saying, look here, folks, they're going against their women, folks, and they're even going to our country, folks, they're mongering, folks, they're doing this and that. See, you got to understand that these kids, folks, these kids, these kids, they just, they just like coming to our country, folks. They like coming to our country and messing with our women, folks. We got to stop it, folks. You know, so he has this, um, type of rhetoric where he, you know, breaks it down to say, hey, they come into our country mongering, using up our women, prostitute this, prostitute that. When you actually look at the people he's actually attacking, I'll say maybe less than 1% is actually on that tip, you know, who go talk negatively about their own women and only go down there just for one thing only. Less than the 1% are on that. The rest have nothing to do with that. Because, for example, you, he went after you. You know, I've never heard you talk anything negative about, you know, your own black women. You know what I'm saying? And Listen, also, man, I, and I also on top of that, like yeah. you're in a relationship with a Dominican woman. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that right there, that goes against the narrative. But yet he still goes after well, you. Well, this is you what see? He said. But this is what he said to me, man. He said, he, he says, oh, Hello. you, yeah, he said to me. He said to me, "Hey, you met your Hello. girl." Yeah, yeah we, we can. We can hear you, bro. You hear you. You can't hear us. He froze. Yo, he froze. did I froze? Did I freeze? Oh. No, not on, not on my end. Hey, teacher, man, you got to get that boost mobile check, man. <laughs> no, no, that's not me. That's radical. <laughs> You're the only one with the issue, bro. You're the only one with the issue right now. <laughs> You stupid American <laughs> is he got is these is these American kids folks? You see these American kids folks. Oh, by the way, by the way, I just want to just say <laughs> just real really quickly, by the way, you um I don't know if most of the people are aware, but Kim wasn't born in Mexico, he was born here in the United States. Ooh, oh yeah. For those who don't know, Kim was Ooh. not born in Mexico. He was born oh, here in the United this States. Whole, this and whole he uses, about I'm going to tell, tell you something. I'm going to tell you um, something. <laughs> the reason why um, he uses that whole, oh, I was born in Mexico type of thing is so because he goes against other Latin people, right? He, he uses that as a way to front and say, see, I'm more Latin than you. You know what I'm saying? See, I'm more, you know, I'm more in touch with my culture. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, he wasn't born in Mexico, bro. He was born here. That's the reason why his family has certain businesses and certain houses in their kids' names. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to put it in their name because they'll get either deported or won't get accepted. You know, so let's we have to use our common sense. Hey, man, listen, man, I'm just going to say this real quick because, um, you know, I used to make travel videos in the past. Right. And the travel videos I used to put out was. I was actually trying to give out information to men. If they're having problems in the dating scene in America, right, because I used to talk about a lot of those stuff. I still do. So what I do is. I give options to other men to seek out other women with some sort of traditional values. If you're having problems dealing with women in America. Now, I'm not a dating coach or anything like that. I can only speak based on my experience because I'm a traveler and I meet different women and I meet different other people. You know, I mean, I, I travel around the place. So with that being said, um, I guess to his... Uh, his whole ordeal of making uh, repetitive videos about me was he was saying that I was promoting prostitution. Now, for the first part, OK, Kim, I can't promote prostitution on YouTube It's against YouTube guidelines. All right. I'd be totally kicked off. So I don't promote prostitution. Second of all, there's a guy named Miko. I don't know if you guys heard about the Miko world traveler guy. All right. Well. He molested some kid, you know what I'm saying? He did some nasty, fucked up things, right? All of a sudden, Kim will make videos about that and attach it to black travelers. Oh, yeah. He had a field day with that whole thing. Right. And he, he says, See, these day. are what all these guys are hanging out with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a field day. And he even said, 
I think he said, um, if you know that he was down there, folks, um, if you know he was down there, folks, doing all these uh, this and that and these kids, you should have said something, folks. How come you guys didn't say nothing, folks? But it, since he was making videos about Miko, how come you didn't say something, Kim? You know what I'm saying? Nobody knew anything about this sicko. You know, there was just rumors. Nobody right. knew nothing about it. I didn't even but, know nothing about the guy. He said that, that I, he said that I was associated with Nobody him. knew anything. The thing is that Kim wanted to use that to attach it to travelers and further the, you know, the demonization of black people. Because let's be honest. That's all he goes by because all the people that he actually, actually, I wouldn't say black people. I wouldn't uh, say black people. I would black say black men. men. You want to say black? Well, I, I'll say black people, and the reason why I don't I, think he, he doesn't target black women. I'm a, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna say black people, and the reason why I will say black people is because he uses black women, women. as a front. So he to, so, to further his rhetoric on yeah, his further on his, his rhetoric channel. about black men, but in reality, he sees black women the same way. You know what I'm saying? Because if that's not the case, what positive video has he done about black women? Well, he's he's live right now, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that, yeah it is what it is. But <laughs> he hasn't done any positive videos about black women. He oh, hasn't I just said wanna, I just want to add into this real quick. Okay. Because but, uh, before I even say anything, hold on. Uh, uh -huh. He hasn't done anything positive about to black women. No positive videos about black women because when he talks about black men, Mind you, got you guys got to listen to what the words he says. Yeah. He says these black the, these black men in their messed up community. Who is including in that community? Black women. Black women. But see, but here's the you thing, know? though. Here's the thing, though. Black women are extremely emotional, and this is what I say that Kim knows how to emotionally move people. Either if it's negative, if you take it as negative, or if you take it as positive. I don't know why anybody take it as positive. But he knows how to emotionally get to people. So now he's talking more on points that can trigger women's emotions. Oh, these men. Oh, this men do this. Oh, this men do that. And to be honest with you, it kind of comes off a little bit really feminine. Because it's weird to see a man. Who's complaining repetitively about other men continuously all the time? That's what women do. If women have problems in relationships with men, don't they complain about men a lot? Well, I'll say this. Um, you know, us as people of the African diaspora, whether we be African American, Afro Caribbean, whatever. We have to start taking control of our image and our narrative. And, you know, we can sit here and talk about what Kim does, what he says all day long. But you know what? There's an African proverb. If there is no enemy within, there can be no enemy without. Right. And, and, I, and I agree with that. But here's the thing, though. Unfortunately, have, but if he's not, if he's not going to, but, but if he's not going to complain about Mr. BBC all the time, then we need to figure out what is it that's driving him well, to, to continuously thing. attack African-Americans. Now, here's the, think, yeah, go ahead. here's the thing that I want to say. And now, you know, I'm speaking to my people, okay? You cannot expect anyone to have respect for you if you don't have respect for yourself. When you deal with other communities, they have a code of conduct. Mm -hmm. You know, like, for example, I mentioned that I spent a lot of time in Egypt. Egyptians have a certain code that they live by. And one of the things is you don't put your dirty laundry out there in the street. You know, you don't criticize your own in front of others who are outside of your community. You keep your shit inside amongst yourselves. So when we have people on the on YouTube, like the Tommy Sotomayors and all these other people and all these black men talking about black women ain't shit and all the women, black men ain't shit, you're teaching the world how to 
treat you. And a lot of the bullshit that Ken was talking about, he got directly from these type of people who were in the business of tearing each other down. Okay, I, I, I understand that, but I just want to honestly just look at something here because I, I get what you're saying, yeah. but at the same time, we're talking about a man named Kem yeah. who's attacking men yeah. who are not even focusing on what he's doing behind their backs. He's doing TV shows. He's doing repetitively shows. And, and as we're talking right now, he's got a live stream where yeah. he's recording other interviews with other black men having conversations. I mean, he repeatedly, he, he repeatedly does this a lot. Now, yeah. justifying the fact of we need to take care of and watch out for what we do as black people. Listen, at the end of the day, these black people. If they really cared about what they were doing on social media, they wouldn't put it out there. So obviously they're putting it out there to gain an audience. So Kem comes along and he repeatedly does these videos. Just yeah. like he would copy and paste, right. just like he did to Radical Latino. So my question is, if these men are not even paying no mind to a man who's continuously stalking and some would say harassing, because that's what basically it is. Mm -hmm. It becomes, well, does it really matter what I do? Because I'm not paying attention to you. But well, you focus yeah. on yeah. devoting all this energy into chasing me. Well, here's the thing. From my perspective, I believe in not giving your enemy ammunition to use against you. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't have these black men who are going out here and trashing our women and talking about, I need to run to Latin America to find women because black women are all whores and this and that, you know, he would have a hell of a lot less ammunition to use because like I said, a great deal of his talking points are cut and paste or copy and paste from what he's hearing, all of these certain, and let's, let's be honest here. This is not all African Americans, but there is a demographic. It's a small demographic, but they're very. Hey, but, but, but open. check this out though. But check this out though. Um, this, 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 this is where I got to cut you off. This is where I got to tell you something. This is where I'm going to teach you a little bit about black travelers. Now I understand your rhetoric, what you're saying, but there's a lot of black travelers in a lot of groups that do not trash black women. And, he know, and, and check this out. He uh, knows that. He yeah. knows that. So I that's know. that's no excuse. I'm to not say that, no, no, I'm not saying you're being an excuse. You're, you're making an excuse. But what I'm saying is there's no excuse on his part because he's attacking black men who are not even trashing black women but they could be talking about traveling to different countries and giving out useful information. So how is that trash black woman? He's conflating everyone together, but what? Right. And that's where he's wrong. I'm aware that there are legitimate people out there. For example, J rock, you know, he's got a very popular channel. He's not on that tip whatsoever. But what I am saying, is to the men out there who are engaging in that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. You are giving, and let, let me be very, very clear, so there's no misunderstanding here. I'm not talking about all black men who travel. I'm talking in this is instant specifically about those men who do engage in this kind of behavior, you see? Okay. And you have to understand something. Because of the way we have been negatively portrayed around the world by the dominant culture here, people in these other countries, all they know of us is what they're seeing in the media. So no matter the fact that this group of people who trash their own women are a very small minority people outside in other communities 
they don't know that. So let me let me oh, ask you let me ask you this though. And they think this is all of us. And all right, so so check so check this out, right? With Kim now. Yeah. All right. And his rhetoric and his point of views. Okay. Now I got a question for you guys. I'm I'm checking him and putting it in context. I'm 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 gonna get I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to uh radical with this one and then and then I'm gonna ask truth to answer this question too yeah now radical with the saying goes that kim is attacking mostly mo for the most part i see is black travelers um and i guess this whole rhetoric is this that black men are going over there paying for pussy right which it's totally legal and they're totally against their rights to do so because it's legal there. That may not give it a, a good thing or a right thing to do based on your beliefs, but hypothetically speaking, he's all allowed to do so because he's not breaking the law. Now, I've noticed this. He fully focuses on black men who sex out Dominican women. For the most part. And he's not even Dominican. He's Mexican. You are Dominican. So I think you would have a little bit more. I think you would hold a little bit more weight. Knowing that it's dealing with your people. So my question is this. Um, how comes. The, I don't know if you guys are familiar. Do you guys know. A, before I do get into that. Do you guys know a guy named Cuba David? Mm, no. no. Okay. I'm going to screw you guys on C Cuba Dave. Cuba Dave was arrested about a couple years ago because he was promoting sex tourism on YouTube and he was a white man and he traveled to Dominican Republic many, many, many times. And he's traveled to Thailand as well as Bangkok promoting prostitution. This is why you see all the fucked up things that's going on right now. But see, a person like Kim, who doesn't even do his diligent research, He's got this problem with men going down to these countries, paying for prostitution. But he never talks about who funded and started this YouTube shit for the longest time. Everybody knows, every traveler knows that Cuba Dave is a legendary traveler. And he's a white man who travels quite a lot. But he would never talk about white men who actually go down there and pay for prostitution in these islands. But he so focuses on Mr. BBC. Because he he points his fingers at Mr. BBC. For corrupting the communities. And the so-called, I guess, prostitution sex exchange, right? And he says, we don't do nothing for the community, right? Black American men, African American men. When in fact, prostitution was illegal at one time in Dominican Republic. But the governor down there said, you know what? Fuck it. We can't, this is getting out of control. We can't handle it. So we might as well make it legal because the tourists are sending money into the community. It doesn't, hey, anybody could be against it. It may be against your beliefs and shit, but at the end of the day, the money is going into the community because the money gets circled around in the country. What do you think those women what do you think those women do with the money? You think they're going to spend it outside the country? No, they spend it within the country. Doesn't make it right. But I say this to a person like Kim. Why are you upset at the fact that black men are doing what white men are doing or what they've been doing for many years? And also white women who go to Jamaica. Truth, you know this. Yeah. There's white women out there that pay for dick. So he would never. Huh? Rentarasta. Rentarasta. They go, they go to Jamaica, white women, European women go down there and they pay for penis. But see, he would never talk about those things. He solely focuses on BBC. But see, a person like me, I do right, I do my homework. He doesn't do his homework. Um, I think um I think is um you do have a point. I want to. I want to just uh, hop on 
我我我我我，我我我 um, I'm a I'm a hop on what Truth Teacher was saying before. Yes, uh, I I don't I don't think that no um no community should be bashing their own women. That's not something right good to do um or to live by. Uh, but again, the the things that I've seen Kim do is he's attacking the majority of the people who don't even do that. Um, yeah. So that's where the issue comes along. Yes, some of the people he uh, he attacks do do that. Yes, I understand that. But again, the people he talk, uh, talks about, like uh, you know, uh, Kid Organic, you, all these no. other people, they don't do no, they don't do none of that stuff. You know, roll and the that's tape. Why it bothers me, bro? He, because yeah, it bothers he the shit out of me because I don't do the shit he says. Yeah, so so I'm traveling. There's a good travelers out there. Is that exactly so? You get that name, put it on you, especially if you try to put me into a category. Yeah, what what the the fucking pedophile motherfucker's name is? Yeah, come on, dude. So so that that's what that's what that's what my issue comes in, you know, with the whole uh, you know traveling stuff. Um, let let's <laughs> let let's let's keep it let's keep it real. There's there's certain travelers that do go to Mexico. Yeah. But um, they ain't really, you know, they ain't really popping like that. Um, they go to Dominican Republic. Why? Because our women is popping, you know. Um, uh, you know, some, you know, not trying to talk bad about my Latin women, but you know, some of them be shaped like you know refrigerator boxes <laughs> up at, uh, up in Mexico. But anyway, um, not all. I'm just saying some. Hey, some um, of like that refrigerator, yeah, man. That's a, it's a, some. We got some. Ice <laughs> no, so. <laughs> well, so um, oh shit! Now, nah, so so uh, you know the 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 whole thing about the whole uh prostitution thing. Let's let's keep uh -huh. it real. Um, it it got legal not because of black men. It got legal because the white men were constantly going down there. Let's keep it one hundred. I want to hear that shit. Um, white men were going down there. I believe the reason why Kim. Doesn't do the majority of the videos about Mr. PPC <laughs> instead of BBC, Mr. PPC, Pink Puny Cock. Um, the reason why he doesn't do that is because I, like I said again, he has a certain image and already a, a certain view of black people as a whole that is negative, so that to fulfill. That negative stereotype, he has to constantly, constantly, constantly attack a certain Hello. group of people, you know. Um, with that being said, you know, I came to the conclusion that he, based on some of our personal uh conversations, and even mm -hmm. you can even see some of the um conversations that he had online. Uh, he, I believe, and it's I'm very strong that I believe that he's autistic. And if anybody knows anything about autistic people, you guys could look it up and see some of the characteristic traits of autistic people. They usually tend to focus on one thing and one thing only, and that literally, literally, that one thing revolves all around them and they become like super experts on that one thing and they they get so infatuated about that one thing they that focused yeah they they become uh, hyper focused on just that um for example there's a couple of autistic people on youtube who's obsessed with sonic the hedgehog <laughs> no you're laughing but i'm that serious some of yeah, the, no, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. People are obsessed with Sonic, they constantly draw Sonic the Hedgehog, you know. So, do you think, do you think, so you're trying to say that Kim is artistic based on the conversations I had with him? Yeah, based on some of the things that are recorded out here on YouTube, it's very clear, um, to see that he is. On the spectrum of autism, for example, mm. when you, if you ever talk to him or hear an interview, any little social conversation of of interaction that that might be a joke or something that is, sarcasm. I'm sorry, what? Sarcasm. Or, or sarc, yeah, sarcasm. He would he would not either catch it or would take that literally. For example. 
if right now, um, me, me and Truth teach a joke around all the time, right? Mm. I call him an old geriatric bald headed fuck, right? And I call you a fat bitch. <laughs> you know, yeah. we joke around like that. We yeah. understand by social conversational um, yeah. standards that it's a joke. I'm just fucking. Oh, you know, he, he calls me Jigglypuff. Well, well, so. well, well, <laughs> well, that, well, that's not what yeah. I'm talking about. But you know, well, uh, yeah, the, you, the you, thing, you if you have, if you have a, if you have a conversation with him, and yeah. you would just, uh, he would talk about BBC, right? And um, you just, I don't know, you out of nowhere just say, well, you know, um, you know, BBC, uh, BBC, you know, some women like BBC with some nuts sometimes. Yeah. That's all, uh, you know, like make it like a chocolate bar type of joke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That will literally fly over his head, and he's like, "Huh, huh?" You know what I mean? Like, like that. That right there will not register. For example, um, uh, I think was it one time Antonio Batista made a video about me, um, interviewing somebody I apparently <laughs> supposedly you know dated and stuff. He called me that same day and said. Uh, is this true? Is this true? And I pretended like it was. I said, "Oh yeah." Me, I said, "Oh yeah." Me and me and his sister been dating. Yeah, I actually I knew Antonio Batista for such a long ass time. Actually, me and him are related. Wow. Did you do you know that he actually believed that? And I said, "Kim, I'm just fucking around, dude. What is wrong with you? Are you serious?" And he could not understand that I was being sarcastic. Yeah. If you look at some of my uh, one, the one interview that I did with him, you would see that he doesn't understand sarcasm. Yeah. I would throw little things out there, he would not catch it. If you see some of the live streams that he's on, he would not catch it. Wait a Reason you mean you mean that you and Antonio are not related? <laughs> no, no, unfortunately, we're not. No, uh, <laughs> no um, I would have so much dirt on him, man. Imagine. No, so um, so also he recently had an interview with uh Rancho. Man. He goes and and within literally within. Can we, the, can we bring that up? Yeah, I mean, can we, yeah, you want to well, watch I'm, bring, I'm bringing it up now. Literally within I, the I got first, it right here. We could play a little bit of it. <laughs> let me let me let me set it up first. Let me set it up first. The first two minutes. The first <laughs> don't, two don't do minutes, that. Don't do that, radical man. Come on, minutes, man. His autism comes into <laughs> full display because you know you know why? When it comes to autistic people, it they don't know sense. no no they, they don't know the boundaries of certain conversational patterns you know they don't know to either be inappropriate or be appropriate they they don't know where to gauge it so when it comes to when they when they cut that right there within the first two minutes of um, him trying to give an analogy about latin people his autism comes in and fucks everything up where everybody goes uh what you could go play it right now if you want you know what i noticed with him though which is hysterically hilarious is that he'll say one thing and then he'll jump from his conversation to say something else and then he'll get back to what he was saying, but then he'll get back to something totally different. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah, but but truth truth even knows this. I don't know if truth wants to speak about it, but uh Kim, he's a very sad individual. You know, he he lives in the garage of, of his parents' house, you know, and truth could attest to this, you know. Yeah, truth, true. What do you, what do you, what, what do you got to say about it? Well, listen, I'm not gonna go in divulge things that me and Kim, you know, like spoke yeah, yeah. in in confidence. But let, let's just look at it this way: if you're a happy person and you're happy with your life, mm -hmm. you engage in this kind of behavior. I mean, like, just look at the energy. Of his whole channel and his videos, all negative, 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 complaining for ten years. Dude. Why do you think? Why do you think? Why do you think he complains so much like that, though? Say that again. I mean, like, why do you? Why do you think is? Do you think it's deeper than just attacking? I, black? I think truth is about to get to it. Truth is about oh, to get sorry, to it. I'm sorry. Brother. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, ahead, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, like, um, I had gotten a lot of flack because. Let's be honest, I was friends with Kim. You know, I did befriend him. But you have to understand the context within which that friendship was created. Because 
I'm the kind of person that no matter what, I stand by my principles. And I don't change who I am to be friends or to befriend anyone. So, you know, in the beginning I was talking about, you know, finding Kim's videos. Now, here's what happened. I would see Kim's BBC videos or whatever, and it would be full of inaccuracies. And I would engage him hmm. in discussion. Whereas everybody else who came to his channel, they just get emotionally triggered by what he was saying, and they didn't have enough knowledge, historical and cultural knowledge, to refute what he was saying. Me, on the other hand, that was not the case. First of all, I'm defending African Americans, but I'm not an African American. And I make it a point to really emphasize that fact. I am not an African American. Mm -hmm. I am a first generation American of Jamaican ancestry. Mm -hmm. The reason why I do that is because I want people to know when I am defending African Americans, I'm not doing it because I've got a stake in the iron. I've, I've got an iron in the fire here. I'm doing it because I'm telling the truth. So I don't have to be an African American to set your ass right when you are coming out your face with inaccuracies about the African American community and who they are. And let me ask you something, man, because I know you a little bit old school, so you probably might know this too. Mm -hmm. Um, but back in the Bronx, though, there was a a very heated rivalry between African Americans and Jamaicans. And at one time, African Americans didn't like Haitians or Jamaicans. It goes back forever. Goes yeah, it goes. It goes. There's a deep hatred, though, mm -hmm. right? They used to call us African booty scratching and shit. Right now, this might hit kind of deep, but you know, we just we logical men. You know what I mean? We don't take things to heart. It's just questions here. Now, do you feel that same type of rage? What for African Americans? Yeah. Yes, he does. He be telling me all the time. I say, "Damn, bro, we just we just talking real here because we <laughs> both Jamaicans. We <laughs> both Jamaicans, <laughs> and I'm a Jamaican American, right? So I I know the culture. Why do you bro. think I'm him and Kim was so cool? Because they share that same hatred. Damn, bro. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> now let me no, stop. No, no, let, no, me no, stop. let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> but for real, truth though, what I'm yeah. saying is because. <laughs> At the hospital, she's listening. This is what the fuck happens. Now. <laughs> but check, check, check this out. You know what you're talking about. Listen, here's but, 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 but what I'm saying, truth is like to you, right? Is this there's been a stigma hate between Africans and Jamaicans for the longest time at, at one time in the Bronx? Huh? I'm trying to clarify that and put it in perspective for you. Okay, you gotta let me, you gotta let me, you know. Okay, okay, go, go, go ahead, brother. I'm, I'm just saying because you know, I'm, I'm, you know, you're dragging it to fifty, but now nah, I'm just fucking with you. Go ahead. There is, there has always been a certain segment of the African American community that has been very resentful towards not just Jamaicans but West Indians and foreigners in general. Right. You have to understand that those people do not represent the entire community. They never have. Mm. Nor do they represent or speak for the entire African-American community. If you center in Harlem is... What, was, what, what year was this? Huh? Well, I mean, what, what, when was this happening? When, when, oh, this is black and white era, bro. <laughs> I don't know nothing about this shit. No, no, he's a... He, well, the Sean, the Sean Burke, he did a library. He did a library and stuff. You need to educate yourself about it. Oh yeah, well that, that's that's hey, that's why I'm asking you. Hey, OG, that's why I'm asking you. Go ahead, you got the platform. The work Center in Harlem on 135th Street, right across the street from Harlem Hospital, is the premier center of the study for African and African diaspora history. In the country, if not in the world, 
That center was originally founded by a Puerto Rican named Arturo Schomburg, okay? Mm. Who was told as a child in Puerto Rico when he was learning history, they were talking about the history of everybody all over the world. And he said, well, what about Africa? And the teachers told him Africa has no history. And so he took it upon himself to search out information about the history, not only of Africans, but people of African descent all over the world. And when he came to the United States, he was in circles with African-Americans and he shared his work and it was from his personal collection that that library was created. You can look at a lot of people who came up from the West Indies who mm. became activists when they came here. And that mm. was in the early 20th century. For wow. For sakes, Marcus Garvey. Yeah. You know? So this narrative that there's this hatred between African Americans and West Indians is not true. But that does not mean that there have not been segments in the community who are spiteful and hateful. That is well, 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 it's so I, represent but see, what, what you're talking about, I, I totally agree, but but what I'm talking about is from streets perspective. It's a little bit different. I'm it saying was, maybe maybe growing up growing up from my era. As, I'll tell you as a person who come up who for all intents and purposes, even though I was born in the United States, okay, I was raised in Jamaica. So when I came back with my thick ass accent, I was an immigrant. Okay. I caught hell, not just from certain African Americans, but Puerto Ricans. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry about that, bro. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. I, I just have me and my friends. You know, we just saw you, and we just like, yo, it's on site. My fault, bro. Y'all motherfuckers wasn't even up here like that yet, so shut up. <laughs> Damn, why all that hatred though? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mom wasn't even here yet. She was still back in the. Is what is what is what my ancestors did to him. That's what it is. You know, yeah, my mom, 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 yeah. mom's was still back there in Ecuador making her guinea pig stew. So that, shut that, up. Is, that is true. She was trying to get the perfect door to flow her ass into America. You're right. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> her first stop was Jamaica. So, <laughs> oh. Oh. No, let, me let me stop. Let me stop. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. So, you know, yes, I did experience a lot of problems when I first came up, but I also had a lot of friends. Yeah. And I have some really dear, sweet people who mean a lot in my life. So, this is the thing you've got to keep it in perspective. Right. The now, reality let me, let me, of this is you're gonna have hateful people, but you have to realize mm. they do not represent, nor do they speak. For well, the let me other. let me ask you let me ask you something though. Like, do you consider Black Americans, Caribbean, uh, uh, Blacks? Do you consider us like just all as one people, or is it? We have a common, we have a common um, ancestry, but we have different cultures. Yeah, which is which is true because I mean you see blacks in in in, in Canada who speak French. There, there are people of African descent all Everywhere. over the world. Right, but see, when I was saying that, when I was saying that to Kim, and when I said that there's black people in Dominican Republic, he got really furious with me when I said that shit. He wanted to kill me. Now, I want to. I got a question for both of y'all. Yeah. Now, we've seen the Antonio Batistas, right? Yeah. How they don't, you know, he's Dominican descent. He's blaming Haitians for coming over and messing up his community and all that. Now, my thing is is that um, if they know there's a trace of African black ancestries there, why do they have this rhetoric on hating black people who share a same island as they do? Okay. Um, here's what you've got to understand, right? Here in the United States, because of the way this country was constructed, 
there is the tendency to identify by a concept of race rather than nationality. This is not a perspective that is universally shared around the world. This is something that is really very peculiar to the United States, and it confuses the shit out of people in other countries around the world. Because no matter where you go in this world, the overwhelming majority of people identify according to their nationality and their culture first. So when you look at the Dominican Republic and Haiti, you cannot interpret their reality from the lens of the United States American experience. You okay. have to appreciate it on its own terms. Let me let me let me there's, let me there's a political historical situation okay. that happened between the Dominican Republic and Haiti, which has led to a lot of animosity and mistrust on the part of Dominican people towards Haitians. But having said that, once mm -hmm. again, you have to understand what I was saying before. When you see people like Antonio mm -hmm. and others like him, and they do exist, you have to recognize the fact that they do not represent, nor do they speak for the entire Dominican community. Because if you go to the Dominican Republic itself, right. on the ground, you're going to see a lot of Dominican people and Haitians who coexist. Right. Without any problem. Well, I think I think the thing is a lot of travelers are aware of that and they know that because they travel. But it, what puzzles me a lot is that you got a lot of these dudes out here uh, who swear up and down that they're not black or they don't have black in them. But it's like travelers like me. I go to DR. I go to Colombia. I go to Costa Rica. <laughs> I see nothing but blackness out there. So I think it's quite funny. So that's what it, 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 it makes me laugh. I'm not going to go and divulge things that was told to me in confidence. Right? Fuck it, I'll do it. Go ahead, Radical. Let, let's, hear, let's hear what you guys no, say. No, no, no. Let, let Truth Teacher finish uh, um, how unhappy he is. Let him finish and then I'll All just... Right, teacher, go ahead. He's not a happy person, right? Um... This is a person who is extremely angry. And listen, it doesn't take a rocket science scientist to figure this out. This is someone who is very unhappy and very angry at the world in general. Because I, I don't know how far back you and Ken go, mm -hmm. but I remember him from the first incarnation on this channel when he used to show his face. Right. I noticed that. He is angry with everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean everybody. He is angry with the world. Yeah. But here's the thing. When he made his videos about the stupid white guys, you know, the stupid, the conservatives, nobody paid attention to him. Hmm. When he made his videos about the Cholos in uh, California, not too many people paid attention to him. I think Bert Martinez made like maybe one video response about him. Not too many people were paying attention to him. But mm. when he started talking about Mr. BBC, mm. holy shit, <laughs> I struggled because... Guess who started paying attention to him? And you know what? Me. I can solely admit that. I did. I fell for his bullshit. I fell for the booby trap. No. So it's like you got an angry person out here and they're just spewing all of this stuff out. Yeah. And they're throwing stuff at the wall and say, let me see what sticks. Mr. White Conservative mm, didn't stick. The Cholo mm, didn't stick. BBC, that stuck. And now when you put that together 
with the autistic spectrum and the tendency to become hyper focused on things. Yeah. Oh, now I'm getting attention. Now I'm getting traction. Mm, BBC. But you know, I, I, I said to him that, do you know what BBC is? He said, yeah, British Broadcasting System. I said, what? He was trolling you, bro. He knows exactly what that means, bro. Exactly what BBC is. I'm like, dude, why are you say why are you calling black men BBC? Like Well, and, he explained and, it in my interview. He said that um uh, he kept on hearing a, a man that he used to work with or something like that constantly talk about BBC and then he didn't know what it meant until he asked him, and then he goes, Oh, so you're talk just talking about your your joint. You know, so that's when he started uh, using that uh, that terminology to encompass all black folks. You know, um, mm. listen, I didn't know that was his uh, his tactic. You know, to basically get attention. So if that if I would have known that, I would have stopped this white supremacy talking point a long time ago. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, <laughs> the 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 thing the thing is that, like Truth Teacher said, uh, Kim. Cam, he's a he's an unhappy person. This is an individual that his family ridiculed him. Um, he yeah. he is used as the afterthought. Uh, listen, his sister lives inside the house. Kim <laughs> has to live in the garage. It's funny, but it's kind of sad, bro. It, it it is. It is. It, it's very it sad, you it know, is. that you are subjugated to. The part of the house where hardly nobody goes to. Yeah. It's it basically it it tells some it says something psychological to somebody that okay, I'm part of this family structure, but mm. I'm not really part of them, you know? And I have personal conversation with him, and whenever his parents will walk into his room, he will freak the fuck out and hang up the phone. Like you, he was like scared or whatever the case is. So, you, did, did you ever try to like give him some sort of uh, encouragement bro, on listen, seeking counseling or something reason, like that? Or something listen, like that? the reason actually the count, whole counseling thing. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't tell him anything about that. I was really trying to get him off the whole BBC talking point because I saw that he, hey, you bring something more to the table. You know, you, you know about economics, which I end up finding out he doesn't know shit about economics. He just regurgitate talking points that he hears on YouTube. Listen, this is a man that listens to YouTube every fucking day. Okay. He yeah, listens. That's, that's insane. He bro. listens to five to 10 hour streams every fucking day. He's at the point of YouTube where it's like, it's like the vortex. And he's like the, the, the one opening the door of the vortex. You know what I mean? So uh, he he basically. Do you, do you think he's trying to be an ultimate YouTuber like a O'Shea Jackson? Because uh, no, I've been thinking no, sometimes listen, he analyzes listen, black listen, people uh, who are no, YouTube. No, 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 no. Um, so? No, he I, I'm telling you right right now, this is like a, a hobby for him. Mm. If he gets famous off of this, then so be it, because he really cares about it. Let's be honest. He um he's a he's a hoe for views. Let's be completely honest. You know what I mean? Uh, if he he wasn't, he wouldn't uh, have made three videos about Miko worldwide when his first one hit 2K in less than 24 hours. You know what I mean? And his um. other videos made less than that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's a hoe for views. So the, he he's the he's the person that if he knows somebody close to him is blowing up. Yeah. And he had issues with them. He'll backtrack his statements. I know and start that. and start to like be cool with them. For example, Antonio Batista. Antonio Batista started blowing up out of nowhere with his rant, mm. and he saw that as a positive. He made a video saying, "This is what you guys do, folks. This is what <laughs> you guys do, folks. You guys make him famous, and you guys are so sensitive that he made a video, and you guess what, folks? Now you're making him famous. He blowing up. This, this, you, these kids, you, folks, these kids. You know what I'm saying? So he he goes on, and uh, like, you know, with, with, the, with the whole Antonio, he even said that he's not racist. Oh, I don't believe Antonio's racist. 
and then goes on this whole fucking narrative saying that the looters were majority black going into a, a Latin community, which yeah. is completely 100% false because he was talking about Fordham Road. And by the way, our it's, neighborhood. yeah, in our neighborhood, for uh, by the way, it's called Fordham, not Ford Ham, you stupid fuck. Why it's, does he call it for yo when he no, said no, that? No, shit, because, oh because my he's god, a, yo, I was a, dying. Listen, he's, a, he's, a, he's an outsider. He's, he's a Ford out, Ham, bro. Like, yeah, really? no, everybody, everybody says it. Even Christina said it. Ford oh. Ham, Ford Ham. It's she's a they're <laughs> out, they're outsiders. They're outsiders. So it's Ford it's man. fine. Ford them, man. It's, it's, it's fine. They're outsiders. It's fine. So he says that Fordham Road is a, a Hispanic area, which is not true. What? That whole area is black and Latin. That, that whole area crazy. is black yeah, and Latin. Yeah, he ain't a New Yorker. No, no, after after he made that video, he ain't no New yeah. Yorker. Yeah, and, uh, and the thing is, the thing is, after he, after he made that video, you know, there's blacks, there's Italians, there's Jews. And, no, and yeah. So, so after there. after he made Puerto that Rican? video, mind you, after he made that video, Truth Teacher yeah, goes, yeah. Truth Teacher goes and makes a counter video on that. He goes to the Bronx and says, "Listen, there's a bunch of black and Latin people here. What are you talking about? This is not true." <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean he made, videos. yeah, he made three videos. And truth, I don't know if you want to talk about this, but you were witness. If you want to talk about it, you could let me know. If you don't, just say yes or no. But did me and you not have a three-way conversations with with him? Yes, we did. Did he not bitch up when I started testing his manhood? <laughs> he, let's just say he remained silent. Uh, yeah, wow. exactly. Exactly. So he's the type of person to talk shit behind my back, but not actually confront it. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I've been trying to get an interview with this guy for the longest I time. Blew, listen, I blew up on Cam and I was catching him in all type of lies. This motherfucker said, I've been to Fordham Road. No, you have not. In our kind of truth teaching, our conversation, did he not say that? Yeah. Is that hey, true? Hey, truth and radical, man. What what's this? Yo, does he have kids? Because I I mean, one interview he's saying he has a baby. He doesn't have another, kids. He doesn't another have interview kids. said he doesn't have a baby. Listen, like, listen, I'm gonna on? tell you something right now. This guy, this guy, and this is out of his own mouth. This is out of his own mouth. He hasn't had a girl in eight years. God damn. He hasn't had a girl in eight years. So when you he, he goes, he ain't get no pussy in eight years. Uh, hey, listen, I don't know if he's mongering. I don't know. But the fact no, he ain't that mongering. the fact that he hasn't had a girl in eight years tells me why he's pissed off of these males going overseas and you know doing that thing with other females, regardless if they're legal or not, whatever. The whole point is. That it's 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 a combination it's a combination of things. His yeah. family his family dynamic, the fact that he's not happy, mm. and on top of that, he hasn't had a girl. In, in he's the one that told me this, and then Damn. he said, and then he even asked me for advice. How would you approach a girl? I'm like, wait, what? So Kim, just, wait, 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 wait. So Kim asks you, yes, how to how Mr. do you, Mr. Kimberly, one, two, three, Kim, 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 one, two, three. Yeah, uh, I'm not the only one. Truth teacher, did he not ask you the but same he told question? Me, but he was saying in the video, wait, wait, the Mac, wait the hold, on, he, he hold on, hold on, hold well, on. Here's the thing. Um, he never asked me for advice about how to talk to the girls, but you know, in our conversations, he would mention, you know, like how difficult it is to to talk to girls here in American clubs because they're all stuck up, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Which I thought was really interesting because it was kind of sounding like, you know, these traveling MGTOW guys that he was complaining about, you know. But well, okay, so if he's doing that, then why would he target MGTOW guys? That feel the same way about he does, like the way he does. Well, it's like I said, you know, this is a person who is angry at the world. Mm. Angry at everybody. You see, now I made I made a video on my channel about whether or not Kim is racist. And the thing about it is calling him a racist, it's 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 much more complex than that. That's just it's too simplistic. There's a mm. lot going on with this dude. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And um like I said, he is unhappy. 
and he's unhappy at the world because like I said I remember him from his first incarnation you know his channel and he is just angry at the entire world mm. everybody so when you know like Mr. BBC is just one aspect of an example of what he who he's angry at but well, why, why, well, why does he focus his energy so much on black men? With They're the ones who gave him attention. Nobody but, the thing, but the thing about it is, though, black men, when they travel, you got, okay, as a traveler, I can tell you this. You got certain groups that are about mongering, and they go for sex tourism, Yeah. okay? And then you got certain groups that go there, maybe to monger, too, but to also travel and also see other things like monuments, take pictures, you know, do other things. But the thing is, and you got other people that go there, but they probably see friends and family and shit like that. The thing is, what I'm saying is, if Kim has problems in dating with American women, why doesn't he look for channels or advice? On dating women, on how to, uh, you know, I guess work upon yourself, self evaluation videos. Because he's not confident in himself. That's why. When you, like I said, when you have a combination of loneliness, your family dynamic don't even want you around. Mm -hmm. Um, you're literally, you're literally pushed away into the part of the house that nobody cares about. Yeah, it does something to you psychologically. Yeah, it does. And, and he and he sees comfort in this community where certain women, you know, are actually agreeing with him. So he's like, "All right, folks, I could definitely get with this woman, folks." And mind you, I'm God, not, and you know, he's got. I'm not even gonna check, check this out. Check this and out. I feel so sorry for her, man. Check the, check this out. I know somebody personally that I've talked to that I talked to Kim before. And he was going to, I'm not going to say her name. Yeah, he was going to interview her. And she told me she cut the interview short very quickly because she told me that she felt strange. She felt weird. Like he was a fucking weirdo. Uh. And she told me, I could tell that he doesn't know how to approach women. Mm. And I said, word. And she's like, yeah. And mind you, she's telling me this after me and her were already done talking and doing whatever, whatever, whatever on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. word, that's crazy. And this is what she, out of her old mouth, she told me that. I felt some type of way. I, uh, I felt like he was weird. And I cut the interview short. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I even, and mind you, at this time, I'm still talking to Kim. Weeks later, I asked him. I'm like, hey, bro, uh, what was it? You uh you you um you got a girl, bro? You got a girl he's a he's like uh no no not right at the moment, fix, not at the moment. And I'm like, I, I so I tell him, I was like, bro, do you I'm like, do you know how to talk to women? Do you want me to to teach you or whatever the case is? And he and he's like, but obviously this is out of nowhere. This is like super random for him. So he's like, uh, yeah. uh, uh, uh okay, fix. Uh, all right, fix. You can you can all right, Phil. You know what I'm saying? So I gave yeah. him some advice. I said, bro, it's not that serious. Don't get out of your head. Literally point at something in there that they have on and just say, hey, I like this. What did you get? And then from there, have a whole snowball avalanche effect of just questions because yeah. you want to get to know them. You know, and let's be honest. Women love to talk about themselves. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, so true. it's very easy to just talk. And ask them questions about themselves, you know, and you, you know, divulge certain things about mm. yourself here and there, but it's very easy. So when I asked, uh, when I told him that he, he said, oh, he's like, yeah, I'm going to take this into consideration. Thank you. Blah, 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 blah. And then he goes on to something else. Right. Yeah. But, but it, it was very interesting how a girl that I don't know from the jump and everything was great. Me and her had a great conversation. Tells me, hey, by the way, do you know this person named Kim? Um, blazy, blazy, blah. And I told her, yeah, I do. And then she divulged this information. She was like, yeah, um, that's why I was a little hesitant to have an interview with you, but I felt your energy and you were good. Mm -hmm. His was a little off. 
I felt nice. like he doesn't know how to talk to women or whatever the case is. It it was a little strange, so that's why I cut the interview short. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Wow. So do you think? Uh, okay. So just just getting what you're saying, it really makes perfect sense because you know Cam has problems with with his communication skills and connecting with women. Bro, so, it's it's with it's with everything though. That's the thing. It's with well, everybody with, has problems with connecting with women. Dude, I go do. to that. Go to Shit. that. Go to that Rancho video, bro. Go to that Rancho video. Right, let's, let's go to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Go, go to that Rancho video. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this should this should clear anything up. Just oh, go we, to that we, video. We go. We gonna get to his live stream in a minute because oh, he got some black people. Well, no, no, no. Well, he got some black people on there. Who's that guy? I don't know. Rico? Just go. I don't I know. Own. Just go to to his uh oh, to his shit. joint. Let me see if I could do that. Yeah, I see it, right? Yeah, we see everything, but yeah, we see everything. Is that happening right now? Yeah, that's happening now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know who I think it is in the lower right hand corner. Milano? Yeah. Hold on, let me see so. Shout out to Milano, yo. He's the man. Oh, he's some. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah but it, yo, he. I don't know. Your boy Kim hating on him bad boy. He hating on Milano bad. He don't like him. Uh oh, they they put Miko worldwide on the thing. Uh oh, uh, bro, go, go, to, go to the go to the actual shit. Okay, okay, okay. You, you see it, right? Yeah, I see. Uh, Uh, genetics and the whole, and also of all sex. And yes, you got to turn it up louder. You see this type of um, let's call it attitude or relationship towards our bro. Uh, uh, put the volume up, put the volume up because I can't hear. shit. Hold on, hold on. Let me see if I could. Uh, let me see if I could redo this. Shit. Hold on. Black gringos, or is it something you also see? Can you hear now? Yeah. Yeah, white, white Americans too. Same thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the same thing about them because they're pushing their stuff onto people from like our backgrounds as well. And how do you explain that? Why do you why why do the gringos, whether white or black, have this dynamic relationship towards yeah. that part of the world and its peoples? Why do you think that happens? Because for for me, I, I'm trying to be honest about the Americans here. I think personally, there's something going on here because we're whatever it is going on between the white and black Americans, we're in the middle of this. We're we're, we're like the the porn website where you got the girl in the middle, you got one, you got a dick in one end, one and like in in your ass, you got a dick in the in front. And we're like, I don't, oh, I don't, that's I, I don't watch. Us. I don't <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry, man. No, no, no. I, Go, no, no. Keep on playing it, bro. Keep on playing it. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. This is crazy. So, well, you know, you know, there's a, that kind of scenario. I, understand I, 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 I have no idea what you said because my mind just blocked it out. Okay, you blocked it out, but the audience probably knew. So, look, it's basically we're in the middle of this. So, there's this white versus and black. But why do you out. characterize it as a as a woman getting fucked? Because the thing about it is that if do you, you feel like do you feel like a woman that's getting fucked? Well, do I feel like I get fucked? No, I'm using analogies for jokes. That's just it. That's a quirky joke, man. That's a weird, I know that. that's a weird joke to tell to a man you're just meeting for the first time. Just saying. Well, hey, you know, look, man, you know, you're on YouTube. You gotta give some sort of something to the kids. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I understand. That. I mean, I'm vulgar, you know, but man, yeah. I'm not necessarily sexually explicit. Well, you know, you know, again, it's 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 part of the territory. So I'll, I'll try make it make it PG, make it simple. Don't worry about yeah, it. You can use those uh, words all day, you know. But yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing. Okay, how about this? Um, what, 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 what I'm trying to get at, Kim, is if, if you could give me a theory, a cohesive. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You could you could pause it right. There. You could pause it right there. You can stop it. You can stop it. It, it folks, it's just like you know, we're women, folks. You know, I, you get it in the front, and and, and I get it, I get it in the back, folks. You know, it's like I'm a woman, I'm getting fucked by Mr. BBC, folks. I, I mean, uh, 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 I mean, 
Uh, no, no, folks. I mean, it's a, it's a joke, folks. It's just a joke. It's just a joke, folks. I, I'm not a woman. Uh, why would I? Why would I even say I'm a woman, folks? <laughs> you know, you know, it's it's funny, but it's also sad at the same time, man. Bro, you can already tell the category that he u- goes to Pornhub for. You know, he's a he's a jokester, bro. Bro, but at the you- same time, he he actually thinks this shit is like. This is his life. This is his reality. Bro, all he goes to is porn websites and YouTube. That's it. That's all he goes to, bro. You can tell, you know, yeah, this why guy. Did he, why did he use an ad- an analogy of a. It's like two guys and a oh, guy you, like, and a like girl a, getting what, fucked. Like, why would like you? A, why, he why could, listen, there's, there's a, a, a bunch of analogies he could have used. He could have used a volleyball analogy where we are the ball in the middle. You know what I mean? He could have used that. He could have used com- something completely like two friends fighting and you're in the middle. You know what I mean? You're in the, you caught in between. He could have used a million and one analogies, but he went straight <laughs> to porn. And talking about getting smashed. And I bet you $100 he thought about in his mind when he was saying this so-called joke. I bet you $100 he thought about Mr. BBC. Oh, God. Damn, man. I told you, man. He got some sugar in his tank. God damn, man. You know, Latinos are the women who are caught between... uh, Mr. BBC and Mr. Yeah, oh, yeah, but God. you gotta understand, folks. It's, it's like it's you know, it, it's the it's a it's a joke. It's a joke. You know, I'm not I'm not a woman getting fucked, folks. You know, it's it's a joke. It's a joke. It's it's just a joke, folks. It's a joke. I I uh, you know, it, it's like okay. Let me give you another analogy. Let me give you another analogy. It's like it's like a. We are like the woman walking down at night, you know, in high heels with our ass hanging out. And then we just, um, you know, so happen to, you know, this and that, uh, uh, just pass by a bunch of BBCs and then we get, get raped. You know, this, this is, this is what we are, folks. We're just the woman getting raped in the alley by BBC, folks. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's another, that's another wrong analogy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. It's like, you know, the porn sites, you know, folks, it's like us, uh, you know, in the middle of three dicks. And we're just, you know, sucking it and just trying to uh, survive, um, you know, this this whole uh, train wreck. You know what I'm saying, folks? It, it's it's is that a bad example, folks? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here's another analogy. Here's another analogy. It's like, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, you went crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the time when he had the uh, interview with Sophia when he had gone up to Boston? Did you ever see that video? Oh yeah, I saw that video. She was super happy to see him, though. Um, <laughs> the thing about it is, you know, the kind of language that he was using when he was talking with her, it was like, it was really cringy because it's like, dude, you know, this is a lady that you're talking to, you know, and the kind of language that you're using is not the way you convert. Okay. What, 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 what language was he using? He was using a lot of really foul language, you know. To a woman? I mean, he wasn't cursing her out or anything, but, wow. you know, the, the, the way he was talking with her is the way guys would talk with each other when there's no women around, you know, that kind of language, you know, the way mm. we be like really, really rough. It's, folks, it's like we're in the middle, folks, you know, it's just like, you know, we, we're in the middle of, of a couple of guys and they're just putting their hand inside our anal cavity. I think it's called fisting, folks. We are the woman getting fisted, folks. I, but, I'm sorry, bad analogy. I'm sorry. It's, it was a joke. It's, it's okay. It's all right. It's just a joke. The audience got that, folks. <laughs> oh shit! Oh my this god! Is funny. <laughs> yeah, he out here saving these hoes. <laughs> oh man, no, but truth teacher's right. Truth teacher's right. He uh, he started, he started, he started going a little vulgar, and and actually, she was like, you could tell she was like, she was, 
like suppressing a laugh, but you could tell it was like a nervous kind of laughter, like, mm. oh my God, what the hell did I get myself into? Mm. You know? But, um, you know, like I said, um, this is someone who is very unhappy. Sorry, I don't know that. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Uh, oh, there you go. Hey, there you go. Don't tell Kev that. He might get upset. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> my Alexa going off. Uh, the, the, the thing is about Truth Teacher, he has a sex robot. See, a lot of people don't oh, know this. Oh, he has a sex good. robot. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's about this. It's about the time where he has to, you know, take her out, take her out of the charging port and you know do his oh, little yeah. thing or whatever. Yeah. You know, because when when he when, no, see the thing is when we talked oh, about yeah. when we talk, when you we talk, you squeeze my. <laughs> when we talked about BBC, that's why the, the robot was like, I don't know that. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's all good, bro. It's all good. <laughs> For me, she likes me better. Don't be jealous, okay? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, she's uh she's 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 been around she's been around the she's been around uh, she had uh, her ports uh you know stuffed a little bit too many times, so of course, yeah. I'm, I'm not jealous of that. I'm not jealous. <laughs> Her bat, her battery is a little used up. That's all I'm gonna say. Ah, <laughs> damn. She needed a little software update. Hey, teacher, man, you didn't you didn't use Duracell this time? Which 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 you? Don't tell me went to the Dollar Tree. You know you got the dollar batteries for that. You know, <laughs> you know you got over there, buddy. Energizer. I don't use Duracell. Oh, the man say the man say he use energizer, F folks. It's just like an energizer battery, folks. I swear to God, we're in the middle of this, folks. It's like you know we're uh, in both angles. We're energizing Mr. BBC and Mr. PPC, folks. It's like you know we're we're just a. It's like folks. It's like we're the cream pie of Mr. BBC. Oh, bad example. I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry. Bad example. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, talking about BBC. Talking about BBC. He's actually live right now. You want to? You, you hey, you want to see what he's talking about? Uh, oh, yeah, let's let's see what he talks about real quick. She, uh, she just says no. <laughs> uh, no, let's see what he talks about real quick because I I got I I gotta go. I gotta go. Okay, after, okay, okay. This, this is what go. he gotta say, man. Because this, this, this let's see what fun. he gotta say real quick. All right, all right let's see. Uh, is my shit on? I, I can't hear nothing, bro. Yeah, I can't either. Hold on, let me fix it. You want me to put it through my end? Yeah, put it to the end. Let's, let's see what we can get to the end. Uh, I beg your pardon, young man. Uh, <laughs> let me see if I can put yeah, it. That, yeah, that didn't sound too right, did it? My fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to take that back. Take that, take that, take that. If that's misconstrued, then that's fine. But this dude has 30,000 subscribers. He says that he's more famous than me and all that stuff. Go right ahead. You're more famous. Then go. But why do you care what I have to say? What the hell? Because because you know why? You know why? Because I'm pointing out something that's obvious. Dude, you don't like yourself. You don't like your own women. You don't like your own community. You don't like yourself. And that's the truth. And not only that, you don't think I don't know about you doing all the scam artist shit you've been doing? You know, that's why you had the issue with, with O'Shea Dude Jackson. And he's like, yeah, like he he, you can tell by his body you know. he's all smiling and always all that stuff. Like you can tell that he has issues. And uh, you know, I, yeah. Who, who is I O'Shea? Know. O'Shea is this other guy. He's a bigger YouTuber. He has an issue with me too, but I, I'm kind of cool with him still. You know, just, oh my god. But, uh, um, you know, you know O'Shea, right? The guy that was with uh, the uh, Symphony review. Don't even talk Laura. about him. Yeah, I I know who he is. Yeah, and and that oh, that's the, the one uh that Stephen Rose might have respond to to. She's I think Stephen Rose might have respond video to it, right? Cynthia did, Cynthia did, and that was the thing about it. And that's and that's when Laura saw me when right. I was over there, and that's when she came following me. And it's odd that it's odd that uh he's talking about my channel. You don't know, understand? I'm like, and it's like. You do realize that she saw all the videos, and the reason why she's commenting is because she's shocked at the audio recordings of the what you guys are saying. Hey, I mean, right the that that what's up? Pause that for a minute, because the bro? thing is, I, I gotta say something about O'Shea. O'Shea <laughs> has a really huge platform, right? Yeah. But O'Shea doesn't mention about this guy. 
He doesn't even talk about Kim. Why would he? I don't think he's talking about O'Shea. I think he's talking about somebody else, bro. Yeah, but then he jumps. But the, the thing about it is he just talked about O'Shea, and then he jumped from a different conversation. Yeah, See, he I don't know. Jumps jumps. I don't know who he's referring to, bro. Bro, he's just uh, mad emotional, bro. All right, you can keep on playing. Man. Well, that's, um, um, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's none of your business. But at the same time, they're the ones talking about our countries. He's the one who went to Mexico and play with the girl's hair and then to basically like compare the hair over in Mexico to the hair with African Americans and how it's better, blah blah blah. Oh, I know who he's talking about. Who's he what, talking what about? The, he, that was he's talking about this video about um this black dude went to Mexico and talked to a, a African a Afro Mexican girl. Yeah. And and he was basically say, "Oh, you got real hair, right? You got real hair." And this black, uh, this this girl goes like, "Yeah, yeah, I got real hair. What about it?" Oh, because black American women don't have real hair. And she's like, "Oh, okay, cool, whatever." And he was kind of like bigging her up. So I, I I don't know what the guy's name is, but I I know who he's uh who he's referring to. That's um, that I'm talking about that. You know. Yeah that that Buffy that Buffy dude he made the video when he included you in that video that let's be honest is actually Kim. Uh, yeah, 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 he yeah. he included that clip into it. So see, I never, I never really understood why, why, why was I in that video? Like, I, I, I just don't really understand that because I don't really talk about shit like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, my whole channel is just is different. Like, I, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Don't know. This shit don't really make no sense, but I don't I, know, bro. Who's he talking to? Who's who's the other guy that he's talking with? Uh, some dude named Greg and another girl named Laura. Yeah, but see that Laura <laughs> chick, she seems bored out of her motherfucking mind. Yeah, that's a fact. She don't seem like she's like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, I already told you a, a chick named Laura, she's gonna get bored with this dude. <laughs> She bored as fuck with this dude. This dude is keep talking about the same shit over and over. Yes, Kim, I know. Yeah. yeah she seems like she just like she's not even into the bitch. She <laughs> fucking mute <laughs> goddamn <laughs> fucking look at this. She give her look at Kim talking all the fucking time. God Kim, damn. good good point, Kim. That's I'd never even thought about it like that. That's really great. Yeah, folks. It's like you know we're in the middle, folks. It's a, it's like you know, it's like in porn. You know, when a when a girl is giving head, and then there's a, there's another guy in, in 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 the in the back, and you know, it's like it's like we're we're like the rotisserie chicken in the porn, folks. You know, yeah, Kim, that that's great. Wow, that's Who's so that nigga Greg so, over there, though. Greg so didn't even say shit. So insightful, Kim. Oh, great. Wow, I didn't even see it that way. <laughs> Greg is just he's just looking to talk. That man didn't even talk yet. I'm curious to see what he gotta say. I, I don't know. I don't know, but you know, the thing is I, I, I never watch content like this. I mean, you know, I would go on his videos and I would just contradict all of the exaggerations that he was making, and that's how we got to know each other because it got to the point where I was leaving so much information that he eventually like gave me his number and we started talking, you know, person to person. Um, you know, and you know, from talking to him, I, I saw the human being behind the bullshit. Mm. And um, that's how it started, you know? So, uh, but you know, the, the thing is the, the friendship really fell apart when, um, and here's the other thing, right? When I would speak with him. Oh, he's you, talking about Negrito Grande. Oh, him. Oh, that's what he's, that's, that's oh, who, he's that, talking. Who, who is that guy? Uh, he's one of the, these travelers, the guy that I told you about the Mexican thing. Um, oh, uh, uh, uh talking about, talking about, see the. Uh, women, women have uh, real hair. Um, you know these women have real yeah, hair. I don't even know. I don't even know all these guys. I don't keep yeah, up. With them. Nothing, trust me. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't know who he is either. I don't keep up with you. Remember them. when I tell you about the kind of guys that are just like fucking up 
that's an example of the kind of person that I'm talking. I mean, like Rad knows what I'm talking about because we were on a live stream that Kim was on also with some of these guys and the yo, the kind of shit that these guys were saying, you would have thought that you were listening to like some kind of Stormfront, you know, live stream. I mean, that's mm -hmm. how bad these black guys were talking about black women. Dark skin. Well, women. See, now, now, see, I'm totally against that. I don't like shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't go around talking bad or down on black women. Do I got my issues with black women? You're goddamn right I do. Do I talk shit about them? Of course. But I'm not putting them down to where I'm just like, just trying to destroy them and embarrass them. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just talk about, you know, just dumb shit they do like anybody else. does. Men in every country have men and women have issues between them everywhere you of go. Course. That's just like, but what those guys were doing is just wrong. I'm not for that. You know, and uh, you know, this is what I'm saying is like, we need to be, in control of our narrative. And when we come across guys like this, we need to check them. Yeah. Because, you know, the thing that, that really hurts me is I look and I see men in other communities, they put their women up on a pedestal. She could be the skankiest bitch that God ever made. But for example, these damn white supremacists, they don't care if that woman is the dirtiest, skankiest hoe that God ever made. They will defend her no matter what. And then you see men in our community trashing our women. Like, God damn it. I mean, I'm not an African-American. But the, the fact of the matter is that African-American men lost their lives in the hundreds because some skanky white bitch claimed that he touched her. And even though everybody in town knows she was nothing but a hoe, they still went out and would lynch these men. Yo, can, can I uh, see what Truth is talking about? I 100% I, I agree that, you know, we shouldn't be allowing um, these, uh, these men out here in whatever community dogging mm -hmm. out their own women you know what i mean because because they'll come to our community or any other community that they fetishize and bring that negativity i want right. to i want to share something real quick because i know who yeah. kim is talking about yeah 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 yeah, we play I wanna, that? We, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm going to i'm going to share it right now are, are um, you are you playing what's going on right now or are you talk you talking about they, no i'm talking about i, I want to play i want to play it right now hold on give me one minute what is she what is laura talking about anyways um, who? Oh, I Laura did. on the chat. She's talking right now. What she I, don't, I, I don't. I really don't know, bro. Um, bro. hold on. I'm trying to give me a minute. Uh, yeah, fuck it. We just listen. Oh, god damn it. Uh, just gotta, just gotta give me a minute. All right, all right, all right. All right. Okay. Nerd. Shut up. All right. Huh? Okay. 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 Uh, now you gotta accept. Uh, you gotta accept it, bro. Uh, oh, you gotta accept it. Gotcha. All right, you accepted it. All right, cool. Yeah, cool, cool, yeah, cool. Yeah. This, is, this is what what me and Truth Teacher are talking about. That we don't, you know, that this is the type of shit that we're talking about that we don't like, and we understand why it's a, you know, we understand why, um, you know, Kim would talk about certain black men like this. But again, he's this person is less than one percent of the black men who travel, right? <laughs> problem that I have in general is that the society that we live in will go out and find the most dysfunctional members yeah. of our communities. Yeah, but you want to know something from light on them like they represent all of them and all of them and they don't and that but, pisses the fucking shit. But, but you gotta but you gotta understand truth. A lot of these we call them dusty niggas. A lot of these dusty niggas ain't traveling. I know that. Because <laughs> yeah. he's, he, he's targeting people like me who make money, who travel. He's oh, not, God, but, God, but he's God. comparing me to Dusty. No, no we, we, we understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We understand, um, Andrew. We understand that, but you're you're missing the the point that um, the the 
the talking points that Kim is talking about is based on these dusty dudes that you're talking, you know, that right. you just they don't have. Them. He yeah. copies and pastes their yeah. book. That's, that's all it is. But again, is what he uses. Yeah. He copies and pastes it. But again, right. we also understand where you're coming. We also understand where you're coming from. That the people that he attacks, you know, uh, again, the majority of the people he attacks don't do this shit. You know, the yeah. uh, the all the other people he attacks is less than one percent that actually do this. But let let's just hear what this guy has to say, right? Uh -huh. So I'm gonna let her explain why. Some of the things you don't like about the black girl. I'm here in Mexico, out here oh, in Me in, in in Guerrero, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna let y'all get her hair. Look at this. This is so beautiful. It's it's, it's natural. Yeah. Yes, she is from out here. So just let them know why. What what are some of the things you don't like about black American women? Oh, I don't. I like the person does but me, I'm no like the woman's. Blogs American because you hear his pose and the nails, um, the the makeup, the etc. I don't like. <laughs> exactly. Because, uh -huh. I don't like. No, she's a no pose. She's a pose. It's a pose. Wow. Okay. So you heard it from her, not from me, but again, she's from Mexico. She's actually, she has a lot of history out here. But just like I say, and look at this long hair. Let me just show y'all this long, beautiful, natural hair. Look at this. Look. I'm I'm, I'm stopping. I'm stopping that bullshit. I'm, 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 I'm stopping that bullshit. I'm stopping that bullshit. Can I can I get my honest opinion on it though? Go ahead, bro. All right. This is my honest opinion on it, right? It could go either both ways. It could be a trigger that he is insulting black women because they don't have natural hair and they got to put on makeup to look beautiful. Or he could be sending a message like, listen, these chicks don't got to be wearing makeup and they got everything natural. Y'all need to start doing it like this. But I understand the he's doing it. But the, the way he's putting it out there is a way of putting down black women. So I totally agree on that. Listen, listen, if, uh, I, I understand, what, I understand it, what you're saying. But it could go both ways, though. I understand what you're saying, that if it was healthy criticism, I would understand that. But that's not healthy criticism. Let's, be, com let's be completely honest. <laughs> this guy right here is actually talking down on black women. If it was healthy criticism, I would not be showing this type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Kim will still be showing this type of shit, but this is not healthy criticism. First yeah, of all, what, what, what she's saying is like she's, wait, wait, she's first wearing, all, but wait, she's wait. wearing everything natural. Well, first of everything all, everything she up. got on her is natural. Wearing natural things. Hold on, there's a lot of black women who are natural just like this. You know right. what I'm saying? Well, yeah, and but, that's true. But he's not put. He's not saying some black women. Most black. No, he's saying black women in general. So that's the issue. On top of on top of that, this is literally one Afro Mexican out of the whole bunch. You he's know what I'm saying? Mexican. Yes. This, oh, wow. look, look at the title. It says this Afro Mexican girl. You know, so this is literally one oh, Afro. Oh, okay. This is one Afro Mexican out of the whole bunch. Did he pick the right one? Yes, he did. He picked a he picked a clear ten. Yeah, she's beautiful. She even though she couldn't you know talk right, but either way, the the thing the thing is he's not showing all the Afro Mexicans that was built like refrigerators who don't have natural long hair who don't who need makeup to look beautiful. Let's keep it honest because. Uh, makeup is not the one, uh, one uh, industry that's blowing up only in the United States on the black American, a uh, black woman American circuit. No, it's blowing up all over. All right, all women use makeup. There's only a right. certain certain individual. Well, just like all women are using weave. Every woman's using yeah, weave. Yeah, exactly. woman no, using weave. No, White exactly. women use weave too. That's, that's Weave, weaves and, and wigs and all that does not mean a goddamn thing. It does not mean a, if this is a criteria that a man has, then find someone that fits that criteria. Why are you bringing down a whole race of women, you know, and comparing them to somebody else? Come on now. You're teaching by doing this. You are teaching people how they should treat us. And you see, this is, listen. I am an advocate for our people traveling. 
And one of the reasons why is because number one, it's a great educational experience. When I started traveling, listen, my whole world opened up. Mm. You know, and the second thing is that by pause, traveling, pause, we pause. have <laughs> pause. <laughs> hey, hey, but truth, I, I respect you. I respect you when you just said what you just said right there. Because I, fe I felt that. Also gives no, 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 I'm telling you, I felt that. I felt yeah. that. When you said that, when you traveled, you changed your whole perspective of life, right? Yeah. That's how I felt when I traveled. And that's what I was putting out in my videos. And the other thing about it is that by traveling, we mm. get to interact with people who only know the stereotypes. And that gives us the power to change the narrative. Yeah. So if you got a dickhead like this going yeah. out there. Understand, you know, I was watching a video today, yeah. a live stream of a sister who was talking about why it is that certain black women get bent out of shape when they travel to Africa. And she was, she broke it down. She said, listen, you got to understand that before we show up, there's already been an image that preceded us because they're watching our media. They're looking at our, our mute, they're listening to our music, all of that. So the image that they have of us has already been shaped before we even show up. So when we do show up, it's up to us to be ambassadors for who we are. So when you got a dickhead like this going, you're just reinforcing all the negative stereotypes that they've gotten about us before you even showed up. What the fuck are you doing? And and, and let me let me and let me add, let me add on to let me add on to that too. Um, mind you, that Afro Mexican woman, she knew most of the negative stereotypes because of the media, and that's done deliberate. That's done deliberately. Mind you, this guy picked this woman out because obviously he had a conversation, but picked her out of nowhere, you know, had a conversation with her and decided to put her in the video and flaunt the certain things that some or most of these Afro either Latin people have. It, that does not represent the whole community. That does not represent all women and on top of that you putting your own women down that's wild to me that's not even something you should even be so, thinking so of. let me ask you something a guy like that would get a person like him very triggered so his natural instincts is to put all oh, black men yeah yeah in that's what a category because so remember it was really sloppy because let me tell you something about him he knows better mm. and that's ultimately why I walked away from our friendship because he knows better. And I talked to him before about, I mean, okay, I can understand if, you know, people like this Negrito Grande, you know, that's who you're talking about. I'm like, okay, I get it. And they piss me off too. But the way you go about it, when you put that information out, you're painting everybody with the same brush. That's if what I don't understand with him. Why does he do that? Because a world this goes He's back, angry. He's angry. It goes back to another thing that I told you. There's another, in addition to the autism spectrum, there's another personality disorder mm. that's going on there. And people who suffer from that, um, empathy is not their high point. Well, is it narcissism? It's narcissism, right? Yep. Yeah. So do you believe that that's what Kim is as part of? He's, he's, he's a narcissist. He, he also has a. Narcissism is like autism. It is a spectrum. Uh -huh. And um, I do believe based on what I've observed, you know, uh -huh. from him and the way he behaves, uh -huh. he is on the spectrum of, you know, he is on a narcissistic spectrum also. Did you try to be like a father figure in some sort yeah, of way? Thing. Me and him, we would have a lot of conversations and... A lot of times we would spend 
hours talking about a whole lot of other stuff that had nothing to do with him. Yeah, before he he talked to Kim, he had a hairline. Look at him now, you know. Uh, Kim stressed him out. No, that, I'm, that's a joke. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a joke. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was a very beautiful baby, and I had this hairline from the day I was born. That's a goddamn lie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll show my baby pictures. Let me see yours. <laughs> I was a roly poly little shit. I was. I was. Go ahead. Go ahead. My phone. My phone. Little butter ball. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, actually, you're close to my family nickname. You're almost close to that. Go oh, ahead. Really? Yeah, yeah. That was kind of. That was actually kind of close. Uh, see, I told you, I knew it. Uh, so go know, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Like, we would have conversations about so many topics about history and culture and. You know, he would come to me now. Here's the thing. You know, he really lives for these like, you know, these bizarro live streams. And I don't fuck with that shit. Mm. I'm, I'm not I'm not a muckraker. I do not listen. He would send me these live streams of these guys just talking the most ignorant shit. But why why? Like hours. Why would he waste all his time and his energy on that shit though? If he if he knows he's ignorant, because I don't. I if, listen. If something is ignorant to me, I just don't waste my energy on it. I cannot. I can't do it. So he'd show me these videos, and I'd be like, "All right, I made it to three minutes." Like three hour live streams. I'm like, "Okay, I made it to three minutes, and I can't take any more." Uh, I think the most I've ever done was like eleven minutes. I'm like, "This is just some ignorant shit." Mm -hmm. And, you know, then he would, you know, start going off on things. And so I would be like, okay, this is true. This is not true. This is the context. You know, when he, XYZ says that he's not, well, that actually is true. Here's the context. You know, so a lot of the times when he'd be bringing up things, I'd be fact checking him, you know, um, we'd be having just conversation. Now, the thing is, I was the first person that Ken ever spoke to off of YouTube. And the thing is, like, even though I would be on his, under his videos a lot of times, I never insulted him. I never called him out of his name because I didn't have to. I had facts on my side. I had information. I had history. I had Real things that I can say, okay, you can go and look at this. So I never had to call him names. You know, all these other people, you a faggot, you this, you that, you're racist. So right away, I didn't fit the profile. And, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I mean, at first when we started talking, you know, he was trying to put me in that BBC. I'm like, nope. First of all, I'm not African-American. Um, second of all, I don't have any obsession with Latinas. Oh, well, you know, because they're mixed and you guys don't. I'm like, um, dude, I'm mixed myself. Yeah. I come from a country and a community where this shit ain't nothing special. Well, I try to tell him that he didn't want to believe me. He says, well, uh, well. He he claims he's Jamaican, but he's he's probably really African American. You lying, folks! You claim to be Jamaican, folks, but that's and, and Cuban, folks. That's not true, folks. I know the truth. These BBCs, folks. <laughs> Good God! You've never been one of these people color struck about light skin and all of that. Light skin don't mean shit to me. Okay, you can yes, be light yes, skin yes. and look. But, like but, 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 but my thing is, my thing is, you're lying, truth. You're lying. Why? Why is he? It seems like he's more obsessed with his whole light skin thing of what other black men are thinking in, in his retro perspective, like the whole like race of black men are thinking. Why yeah. is he so obsessed with that? He's a muckraker. So he goes to all of these bizarro videos of the. Did you ever say to him, like, yo, do you, do you ever say, like, dude, this is an addiction that you're doing? Do you know you're addicted to this shit? That, but I would point out to him that, dude, you got to understand something. 
these people that you're looking at do not speak for the African American community. They do not represent the African American community. That's right. It's they a don't. small, a very a small sector small demographic who just happens to be extremely active on social media. You got to put it into perspective. These people do not represent the real world. No, they don't. I guess towards the end of our relationship, um, you know, it was obvious that I just, listen, I have a certain code of ethics. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, look, even though I don't agree with those kind of um, self-hating black men, at the end of the day, you have to realize the fact that these people are hurting emotionally. And the same thing goes for, you know, like these Latinos that are out here tearing them down, like Antonio. All of these people, the Antonios, the Rich Pumas, the uh, Mr. BBC traveling, putting down his women, the Greedo Grande, all of these people are experiencing emotional pain. And the things that we see them doing are the ways that they try to compensate for those emotional deficits. Mm. All of these people are suffering from one thing. They do not love themselves the way they should. And that and you know what? It's it's a it's a sad situation because I'm gonna tell you this, man. And I'm gonna tell you something about me that I, I don't really talk about too much, but I experience a lot of emotional and physical pain. But my emotional pain was because my father wasn't around. Mm -hmm. He was there, but he wasn't there. He, he, was put, he, was put, he was putting food on the table. You know how it is. Yeah, distant. But he was distant. And my physical pain was going through fights in school. I don't think Kim understands that. There's a, a lack of empathy. You know, that's part of what I was explaining to you when we were having our personal conversation. Before I, I understood it when Truth Teacher left school, he stopped being my teacher. I, I felt, I felt, you know, a big, uh, you know, a uh, sharp pain. You know, I didn't know what that meant. Well, that was that ice pick that I stuck in the back of your head. That's oh, true. Shit. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yo, he did it mafia style. <laughs> After the mafia, he, he did it 1956 style. He's like, I'm going to ice pick in your head. Hey. Classic. <laughs> he did some Tony Montana shit, man. <laughs> Classic, man. <laughs> no, continue, continue. Be serious, you know. Listen, mm. all of us in this world are dealing with things. I mean, I'll be the first one to tell you I got more fucking issues than the New York Times. Everybody do, though. We all do, but it's yeah. a of how you handle it. And these people, unfortunately, they don't know how to handle their pain in constructive ways. Right. Can't. But see, like, when he tried to put me on blast on some shit that I've already put out, out there on public domain... I wrote back to him and I said, Kim, I put this out there on public. So everything that you're doing from your fake account that you posting up about me, it's not relevant because I put this on social media. Everybody knows about this. So we're like, what the fuck? Like you're the last person to know about this. Come on, dude. Kim, Antonio, uh, who is that? The, the light skin motivations people, you know, like all of these people that are like at each other's throats. Mm. They all are suffering from the same thing. They do not love themselves the way they should. And that's sad, though. That's sad. Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been there, bro. I've been there. I don't know how it is. You realize. And, you know, the thing is that in our society, we're just beginning to recognize how important the issue of mental health really is and how pervasive mental illness is within our society yeah you know that's facts and listen we all have to do the work to heal ourselves because listen nobody gets out of this bitch unscathed yeah this planet listen this planet earth it's not made for pussies oh no. 
Nobody gets out of this. Well, bitch. You gotta have thick skin, and I even said this to Kim. I said, Kim, bro, and I and I I did try to reach out to him. As crazy as it is, you know, he's my arch nemesis. But I I did try to reach out. I said, dude, because he he wrote everybody. But listen, I, I don't hate the dude because I even said I just laugh at him. Like I think he's hysterically funny. Plus, none of us hate this guy. None I don't of hate us. him, dog. That's the thing. I just think he's funny. We don't want to see any harm come to him or anything like that. But, you know, the thing that really broke up, you know, when I was like, okay, I got to walk away from this crazy shit. Yeah, he's when the yeah. whole thing with Antonio went down. Now, yeah, when he became friends with me, that's what it was. I kept on telling him, see, the, the thing is that a lot of people don't know. I control Truth Teacher. You know, I control him. <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I tell him what to do and how to do things. And when I came into it, you know, uh, Truth Teacher came to me thinking that he could, you know, um, get to know me. But he didn't know this master plan that I had. I had this master plan to get him away. You know, if you say some Ken. shit like that, Kim, he's actually going to believe your ass. Actually, <laughs> Dude, he I'm using no, that's bro, bro. Why he gravitates Andrew, to women. Andrew, 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 yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Andrew, I'm repeating exactly what think uh, Kim thinks. You think I just made this up out of nowhere? This oh, is what yeah. Kim, no, no, this is what Kim is saying. Kim yeah. is saying that I'm controlling truth teacher, and some other people what? will remain. Oh, no. wait, 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 hold up, pause, pause for a minute. He actually thinks that you're controlling truth teacher. Yes. There's a, well, I, I thought you were just saying that. Oh, shit. No. I'm, so he actually thinks you're controlling him. Yes. Kim actually thinks no, that I no, am controlling no, no, him. No, yes. No, no, no. Truth teacher talks for himself. Trust me. He on some 19. Nah, that's right. exactly. He, he, he be speaking the truth, though. Dude, dude first of all, I, how disrespectful it, it, is it to think that somebody that you've been close to like for 10 years is, is able to get controlled for somebody he just met a year ago. You know what I'm saying? That's very, that's very disrespectful. On top of, on top of that, this is exactly what he, he thinks. Him, Arpanaka, Stephen Rose, this is what they think. They think that I came out of nowhere, started controlling Truth Teacher, and I'm the reason why they're no longer friends. Because I came in like a little fucking puppet master and started controlling truth teachers, but you know, come on, it's it's. No, I mean, the thing is, it's, that it's I, easy. It's easy. You know, he's old. You know, I if he doesn't do what I say, you know, he won't be getting his pills to survive. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> you, can I ask you both? Spiked my applesauce and gave me liquor to drink. You know, he did spike my applesauce with Ambien and gave me liquor to drink it down with. You know. That, I told you not to talk about that. <laughs> no, no, but, Yo, but, but Andrew, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Do you, like, do you think that he is, uh, like, do you do you think that he preys upon people who have the same type of feelings as he does? He he likes to change up his narrative depending on who he talks to, mm. and basically to fill you out to see where your weaknesses are. And then he preys on that, and, on that. and yeah, and stay and yeah. stays and stays on that. Um, the thing is, you, the thing is, he he has nothing against me whatsoever. I everything that I ever told him was either a whole bunch of lies or a whole bunch of half truths. You know, he has yeah. nothing against me. You got to understand something that I never trusted him from the beginning. Okay, and. I noticed that. I noticed that about you. Yeah, I never trusted him from the well, beginning. A lot of people was was questioning. Of course, they you. were. Of course, they they're were like, "Yo, me. is this dude a Kim?" Yo, they said this to me too. Yeah, of course. To like on some real shit, they said, "Yo, don't trust that guy." Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something on the real. Yeah. What was your opinion of me before we actually started talking? <sighs> On the real, you don't. Also, real shit. I didn't know. I didn't know. I wasn't sure, but I, I I knew a little bit from you, from radical. So from what he told me, I already kind of painted the picture. Okay, dude seems like he's logical, and I can have a logical conversation. So you know. But whatever. but before that, but before that, you thought that he was Kim's uh, little before friend. Before that, before that though. Mm -hmm. I thought you were on the Kim Polo Express. You know what I'm saying? Truth. Exactly true. Exactly true. You can't confuse us. You know so what I'm saying? I'm, I'm you a, a coon. Little, you a coon, truth. 
I was a little confused. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sugarcoat shit. But I'm an open minded person. I became an open minded person later on. So in order for me to know my enemy, I must know myself, my flaws. Because my enemy seems to wanna, you know, catch me and see what type of flaws I have. Like for instance, Kim went to you, radical. What's the first thing he asked? Hey, you know anything about Andrew? You know what do you say about Yeah, that, that's a fact. Well, I, well, after well, we well, did the the interview together, he asked me um if if um if I could add, tell him anything about you or whatever the case is. Again, I didn't tell him anything. Um I never trusted him even from the beginning. I always kept him uh, kept him around for two things. Um one cuz I thought I could really change him and see like if that was actually a possibility. And two because he was close to Antonio. So I wanted I wanted to, you know, basically I want to see how di- that dynamic will probably play out. And what further told me that I never trusted Kim was when he would uh, Kim himself would sh- uh, let me hear personal conversations that him and Antonio Batista were having. Yeah. I will I will hear it. He will record these conversations. So that that further told me I don't trust this guy. So um there was also there was also um, um when Kim was already, you know, starting to get away from me, you know, because he was like, Oh, okay, radical can't be persuaded, or whatever the case is. He started little narratives and little bullshit around um saying that I don't really preach what I preach. Uh, I'm pr- in, in private. I'm one way. On in, on online, I'm some other way. And he was giving this little narrative to Truth Teacher. Truth Teacher, you could attest to this, right? He told you the same thing. Truth, true. did he? Did he? Did Truth? Did he ever attack you? Attack me? Um, yeah. in the beginning, before we start. Well, really, he would never do it directly. He would always do it. Indirectly, and this like was some sub, sub, subliminal, subliminal, subliminal messages. By how? By what, saying by saying small things like that they yeah. uh, that will only uh you know that only truth will do. Yeah, you know, like, so he wouldn't name me specifically, but yeah, he would be like he would be like um oh yeah the, uh, these people out here who used to be teachers, folks who used to be teachers, they think that they know everything, they really don't, you know, stuff like that. That was out. Uh, you know, okay. least... Yeah, no, no, but but I'm going. I want to go back to what I was saying um before. Uh, truth. Remember when you even told me that Kim was saying that I was two faced, right? Well, you see, here's the thing. It's like I reckon I didn't quite know exactly what it was, but I recognized that there was a deficit with him when it came to understanding certain subtleties. And I, you know, so he said something to me, and you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, knowing Rad the way he is. Rad was probably saying some wild shit and he <laughs> got it out of context. So I wanted to find out, you know, like, okay, so I want to hear what Rad said to him, you know, to understand how he misconstrued it, you know? So I asked Rad, you know, like, um, you know, and it wasn't that, like, I believed what he was saying, you know, like I said, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I know Rad is like, well, you see what the fuck he's like, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. But I know that about him, right? So mm. I'm like, okay. And because we come from the same area in the Bronx, I yeah. understand his twisted sense of humor, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, this is whatever Rad said to him, he misunderstood because there were a couple of times when he'd say things to me that Rad had told him and I had to like translate it for him, you know, like, okay, this is what happened. You know, no, he didn't. That's not what he meant. This is what he meant. You know, do you Uh, think, do you think that Kim wants to turn the whole world into his version of who he is? 
Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. But I wanted to. I, mean, I, just, I, just, I, wanna, I just want to. What do you think his goals wanna, are? I what do you say, think his goals? I want to. I want to say something. I want to say something just real quick, and then you could go answer that. The reason why I brought up the whole uh thing that he was talking behind my back or whatever the case is because he saw that I can't be persuaded or I wasn't going with his agenda. The reason mm. why I brought that up is because I already know based on our conversations over the phone. You know, I wasn't bending to whatever he wants uh, wants to bend. And there was people around him telling me that, yo, Kim is telling me he got secret recordings of you. And I'm like, recordings of what? You know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? And you guys uh, and you guys are supposed to be friends. Uh, uh, well, uh, according to him, he thinks that we were friends. I made sure I always say he's an associate. Me and him are not cool. And, you know, he and I ain't gonna lie to you. I was I was a little bit skeptical. Of no, him. of course, of course. Of yeah, every, and, and, every, and, everybody, and everybody was, and, and that's totally fine. <laughs> that's a hundred percent understandable. I'm okay. not holding that against no, no, no hard feelings, though. You know, no, 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 fuck yeah. No, let me stop. No, no, it's all good. No, but but the thing is that they were like, yo, he got secret recordings of you, this and this and this. And I was like, oh, that's funny because I never said nothing crazy. The only thing I could probably think about. Is him taking my conversation and chopping it up, making it seem like I said something crazy? You yeah. know what I mean? Like saying you were also skeptical of me at first. Um, no, not really. I was just skeptical on why you guys were beefing. Okay. That's the only thing I was skeptical about. Um, because I didn't know what yeah um history was, but when he lied to me, telling me that. Oh, Andrew is, uh, you know, he's one of these travelers and mongerers and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to make my own decision and see what's up. So that's when, when I reached out to you, wanted to have that interview and stuff. <laughs> um, and then I found out, I was like, yo, this, this guy had nothing to do with that. That's when I started to see that Kim started to change on me and go like, oh, uh, <laughs> can, can you tell me anything about him, folks? Tell me anything about him, folks. You know, he wanted some information on you. <laughs> Um, and all these other people, and I'm like, well, I'm not giving you no information because one, none of your business. Two, I already know what you're about. So why should I even, you know, go down that rabbit hole? You know what yeah, I'm saying? The stuff he says that he, he that he says about me on these fake channels and shit like that. It's false. It's it's not even all of that is not even true though. Like like for instance, like I met my lady off a of Dominican uh, Dominican Cupid, which is true. I did. But it's a dating site. And I said that before. And I've also said in my videos, I told men, hey, if you want to meet some good women from the Caribbean, hey, check this website out. That's all I said. I met my girl off of there. So is is that a crime? Maybe to him it is, but you know I never I never really I understood know. that though. I guess that's a way of him trying to put it as I guess I'm Ordering bridesmaids or some shit. I don't know what yeah. the fuck. Like I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make sense of this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen, everybody's trying to make sense of everything. This guy, uh, like, like Truth Teacher said before, he's unhappy. He's the type of person that will take one thing and and flip it into his own narrative. You know, he's a very unhappy person, and we have to, you know, really see that for what it is. Um. Fucked up thing about it though is you know he is a very intelligent person mm. and you know dude if he would put that energy the same type of energy that he's putting into this bullshit dude you know put that into something that will really yeah be happiness and, and be beneficial to somebody and also I want to just say this real quick um when when truth teacher was on the phone on three way. <laughs> I confronted Kim talking about, yo, you said this shit behind my back. What's up? Did you know that he turned pussy and started denying everything? He turned <laughs> he turned pussy saying that I didn't say that, folks. No, 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 I didn't say that, folks. And I said, bro, I bet you you recorded our conversations. No, I, I, I didn't record your conversation, fix. No, no, I, 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 didn't, I didn't record. True, yo, truth. You don't even have to say nothing. Just say yes or no. Did he not do that? <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Listen, listen. This, this, this is a thing, bro. This is a thing. 
I don't have to lie about my about my shit. I don't have to fucking lie. And I'm glad I should have recorded the shit, but I'm glad that Truth was right there as a witness because I literally saw his whole lie basically come into display saying what? that so basically you were lying to me and now when I'm confronting you with that lie, <clears throat> you know, you you you're backpedaling. You Let, know what I'm saying? Let me put it to you this way. That was the time whatever issue he may have had with radical, that was the time for him to lay it on the table and say, okay, look, this is what the situation is. You know, I'm pissed off with you or whatever because this, this, that, and the third. Mm. That was the time to get it off your chest and get it out there in the open and resolve it. But he chose not to do that. And, um, you know. And I went off. I went off. And I, yeah. I even apologized to Truth. I said, Truth, I'm sorry that you had to see me that way. I'm sorry that I, I kind of, it's not like I used him. But it felt like I did use Truth Teacher because well, when Truth, that, when that's Truth that's wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 hold on, let me, let me, wait, let me finish this. I felt like I did use Truth Teacher because when Truth Teacher called me saying that, hey, Kim wants you to go on, um, on the defensive and make a, and make basic, yeah, basically make a video, you know, to save, um, Antonio and save, uh, uh, you know, Kim. I said, what the fuck is Kim talking about? I can't stop him from getting doxxed. I can't stop him from none of this BS. So I, I told Truth, okay, put him on three-way. That's how I felt like I kind of used Truth because I should have said, yo, let me just call Kim up. You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad that that didn't happen because now Truth is a witness that I, what actually happened. Well, but here's the thing. You know, you know, I, I've been trying to like tell the whole story. What happened? Why? The, you know, I walked away. So, you know, like I said, I began communicating with Ken because to me, like I said, my thing is to foster understanding. And if I come out, you know, swinging against people, I mean, listen, I can, I can cuss out anybody. I'm a Jamaican, you know, we got a talent. <laughs> You know, but what benefit would that be? You know, so my approach is, listen, have a respectful conversation with people because you got a chance that something beneficial will come out of it. And so I, that's the spirit that I approached Kim, you know? Yeah. But uh, it, 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 it seems have, like Kim is a little gotta, bit over control. No, 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 no let, him, let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. You got to let me finish the train of, train of thought. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. The thing is, um, <clears throat> I never pretended to be anyone that I'm not. Mm -hmm. You know, I do have very strong feelings when it comes to people who trash our community. I do have very strong feelings, as I expressed to you, with the whole sex tourism thing, which we're not even going to touch tonight, right? No, we could, we could touch it. Okay. No, you know, don't have to shit. That. You know, it, that's going off on another tangent. I want to stay focused. Well, I mean, if you want, it's up to you, man. It don't matter. Time. I have very negative feelings about sex tourism in general and i never pretended to be anything or anyone that i was not and it was clear to kim you know and i said it explicitly i want my channel i said listen at the end of the day you got to understand something all of these guys talking all of this shit we know with their self-hate you have to understand that they are people who are hurt. These black traveling men, they're hurt. Antonio Batista, these kind of people, they're hurt. And I want my channel to be a place where people can come and find healing. That's what I want my channel to be about. So it was really obvious to him that my thrust was not tearing down Mr. BBC. I mean, I made one video 
that's gotten like the most hits of all my videos. You know, I was talking about, you know, like Kemet. But even though my tone in that video was strong, the message was that we do not have to create false histories about ourselves or pretend to be something we're not because we have culture, we have history, we have made real contributions to world civilization. We don't have to make up shit or pretend to be something that we're not. We already have it all. You know, so when he noticed that, I guess that's when he started pulling away. And the other thing is, this is the time when he starts to rekindle his friendship with Antonio Batista because Antonio's channel got shut down and Antonio came crawling back to Kim like a bitch with his tail between his legs to do an interview with him. And Kim got so hard because of that shit because he somebody sprung. Yep. Did he bust a nut? Yep. Oh, probably did. Yeah, because so somebody got together. He just busted the ill. Not because somebody's coming to him now. The person that he hated is now begging him to go so he could get some clout. That of course. Tremendous ego boost. And that's when I noticed, you know, a whole lot of funny style shit starts happening. Like <laughs> these videos, you know, these interviews with Antonio, where Antonio just makes himself look like such a fucking idiot. And then Kim takes the video down, you know, mm. or he would only play a part of it, not the whole thing, you know. And so I ask him, you know, like, uh, why are you? I mean, and he knows how racist this guy is because we would have long discussions about uh, Antonio and the shit that he's well, did, saying, how crazy. Didn't they, didn't they have like a, a fallout at one time? Yes, they did. Okay. okay. They did. And you well, know, what, we, what was the uh, reason why they fought, fell out? Okay, so. Uh, that was some personal shit. It was dumb. It was, well, yeah. I mean, basically in a nutshell, Antonio was there talking his racial realness bullshit about, you know, Africans having low IQ and African countries having low that motherfucker is racist, man. Antonio is uh, dirty. Well, that's a whole other discussion, right? Ooh, he's but racist to his core. Kim threw it in his face that there are black Caribbean countries that had a higher GDP than the Dominican Republic. And Antonio lost his shit. Ooh. And that's when the whole thing started going south. But when Antonio comes and, from and I wanna wait, wait before Truth goes into that, I wanna just uh, point out. Remember, he had um Kim had no problems with Antonio's racism. Kim had no problems with Antonio saying the nasty shit that he was saying. But when they started getting into some personal shit, oh now they gotta fall out. Now he doesn't like them. And all this other stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So so I just want to make that clear. Just go ahead, Truth. So then I notice um, he's gravitating and associating with Antonio more and more and more. And um, But it was like, oh, what the hell is going on, you know? And then <clears throat> his channel gets shut down for a while. And that's when I notice his whole demeanor towards me really changes drastically. Because, I mean, me and him would talk every day, you know? And I'd call, he wouldn't answer, you know, he wouldn't pick up. And then, you know, like a week later, he answers, yeah, what do you want? I was like, damn. Oh, shit, really? You know? And then he starts going off on this wild rant about black men going down to Mexico and they're destroying the area and he knows what I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's not all of them and I'm going to talk about the black middle class. But I was like, God damn. Know. And then Antonio has his meltdown on his infamous meltdown on YouTube and Kim makes his video. What, 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 did, what did Antonio say? 
You come on, dude. You've seen that video. Well, I mean, I mean, I got people watching. That's why I, they probably don't watch Antonio. Oh my God, Puerto well, Ricans, Dominicans. This is why you do it. You fucking fuck. This is why you do it. Stop cocking for these people. Let, let me. I, 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 let me. Yo, let me just, let me just say. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just say real quick. Let me just say real quick and 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 sum it up. Uh, Antonio just goes into a whole rant because of the whole protest um rioting thing because something happened in Chicago which actually was not the truth. He thought that Latin Mexican Latin kings were going in Chicago and and basically beating up black people who were looting, which was not the case. I mean, that was completely media orchestrated. With, with, it was not true. Um, so he took that as an opportunity, saying, "See, this is how we got to do it." And I want to point that out that he went, he got so mad that Latin people aren't racist. We aren't racist to the point that we want to go out and harm black people. That's why he was so mad, you know. So that's when he went off and he started bugging now and all the other stuff. He lost his job, blah blah blah. Then Kim, yeah, he went world star. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he went world star viral, and yeah. then. And then Kim made the video, and now Truth, go, you could go ahead. So Kim makes the video basically bigging up Antonio, and I'm thinking, so what the fuck are you doing? Uh, uh, truth, remember? Truth, remember? You called me right after that, and I said, hey, what did you tell me? What did you tell me, Truth? What did you, you tell right. me? You were right. Yep, yep. He <laughs> Truth teacher. Ha came to the realization. I would give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, yeah, no. because he was giving Kim the benefit of the doubt. Truth teacher calls me back. He said, "Damn, you were right." Because, I, <laughs> dude, I already lost. I already lost it for Kim. At this point, I was already done with Kim. When he did that first interview, um, no, I'm sorry. The, I'm sorry. The no, I'm sorry. The second interview with uh with Antonio. Right when he did that second interview with Antonio, he wasn't putting it out, and then he did another video of his DNA, kind of, kind of giving him props. I lost it for for Kim after that, and I told Truth Teach, I said, "Bro, I'm done. I don't know what you think about Kim, but I already got my mind made up. I thought I could change him. I thought that uh, he wasn't the person that I thought he was, even though he kept on showing me that's who he is. I'm done." It's over. Radical. I know when I talked to you about this too, and you at one time almost convinced me that, you know, hey, Kim is changing. So I was like, uh, Start making I don't know about all that. He just left a bad taste in my mouth, bro. You know, here's, the you. Thing. here's the thing. Yeah. He started to be a little bit more accurate. In the things that he was saying, you know, but here's the thing. And certain things if he was saying not, was logical. If you're not, if you're not sincere about what you're doing, you're going to revert back to your default setting. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you haven't really listen, the only people that change in this world are people who really sit down and make a concerted effort at improving themselves. Mm. If people do not do that. Don't make the mistake of thinking that they're going to change. So we saw him moving in a more mature direction and we figured, okay, you know, like he's maturing. And that's when I told Andrew, I said, yo, he's, uh, you know, he's changing, he might be changing, you know? Yeah. You know? And, and I believe you radical because he made one video that was so logical. I was like, oh shit. And I, I was like, oh shit, radical could be right. Now here's the thing you gotta you gotta understand. If he moves in a completely different direction, what happens to his following? Mm. You know, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, truth teacher's about to break it down because he broke ahead, it down. He he down. broke it down to me. I said, "Oh, now I understood why." Now, he went. now I want to hear this. Go ahead. Listen, what does he have in his life, really? What does he have going on in his life? Uh, he has a kid. No, he doesn't. No, he got nothing, bro. He got nothing. He has going his on own before. lawn service, man. He got his no, own business. No, that's not his business, bro. Yeah. He oh, doesn't man. have anything else going on in his life. YouTube is the world to him. That's true. That's his world. 
that's his therapy. That's his outlet. You know, honestly, thank God for YouTube. Maybe be out there shooting people if he didn't have YouTube. Yeah, and, you know and let's and let's look at the people that he's around. Mind you, they're all yeah. a bunch of they're all a bunch of losers. You got one person, Arpanaka. He can't have kids. He's infernal, but dude, he can't have kids. He's lying to himself and everybody around what, him. What about the big heavy set dude? Because you know, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm about to get to that. I'm about to get to. I'm about to get to that. Yeah, he used to be. Um, a Ar Ar Arpanaka, he's you know, he's unhappy. He's lying to himself and everybody else, talking about he's gonna move his family here, bro. When it's been years, dude. What are you talking about? You're living in a truck. You know what I'm saying? And now and then, the other person next to him is Stephen Rose. Stephen Rose that makes, could barely get a hundred something views in in his channel, and this dude is just bigging this guy up. You know what I'm saying? He's just basically bigging Kim up, like, oh my god, <laughs> you know, like they're a bunch of losers. He's uh, he's surrounded with a bunch of losers, and how what does that saying go? Um, um, you know, misery loves company. That's true. You know but what I'm saying? I, I've been saying this for the longest time, but at the same time, it's like I could have really, really shitted on these dudes if I really wanted to, but I felt sorry for them. I just wanted yeah. to know why. Yeah, that's why I, I wanted to talk. That's why I talked to Truth Teacher and I talked to you, Radical, because you, you, you know, you kind of know this kid a little bit more. I don't, I just I don't know, know why. much about like Arpanakas, like whatever. I don't go there. I mean, me and him, we, we parted ways. You can go to my videos on my channel and you'll see why. But, you know, Kim has nothing else in his life. So YouTube is everything to him. And the little bit of followers that he has, that's his world. So if he becomes a different person, what happens to that? He's going to lose his following. So even though he knows better, he's not going to do better because it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not in his interest to do so. And do you, what, what do you, what do you, what do you think that, what, what do you guys think, both based on your opinions? I'm going to go with, uh, truth first. Uh, what do you think could make him happy? Listen, that's a that's something that he's got to do for himself. I don't know. I don't know. That's something that he needs to do. But you know, like I was saying, he made this video bigging up Antonio, and I called him. I think the day after, or. Or I think he called me. I don't remember who called who. And he was like, yo, Antonio, he's gone viral. And I was like, yeah, but for what? You know, like he was really impressed that Antonio went viral. And I, was, I noticed that. Yeah. But look at what he went viral for. I said, that's not something to be congratulated. <laughs> Dude, this, this guy is mentally ill. I'm like, listen. This is your friend? That's negative energy. All that negative energy you put you out there? Hell no. This is your friend. You need to talk to him and tell him that 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 instead of making a video to big him up, you should have been there to pull him aside and say, dude, you need to get help, man. This is nuts. You need help. If you yeah, but he but he needs help too. Well, yeah. But you know, hey, you're both sick. You could. They both need to be in the asylum, man. And so you can go and get help together. You they know? don't know any better. That's why they need. They need you because you' sane. But they both need you, bro. But listen, apparently him and Antonio are not friends anymore. You know, again, again, because you know it goes back to what I said. People like this. They lack empathy. When you see somebody like like Antonio have a meltdown, dude, that's a cry for help. Hey, I got a question. Who who's this DR lady I keep hearing about on that side? Oh, that's um her name is Sophia, and she had her own um Is that her name? Okay. It's complicated with her, of course. She's got issues with everybody, and uh, but she did have 
her own falling out with Kim because um, not for nothing, um, I guess he betrayed the friendship in certain ways. She won't go into detail about it. But oh, I'll go into listen. Let's I, go. Listen, you see, a sloppy bitch. Yeah, I am. I'm sla I'm a you're sloppy a motherfucker. Um, he, he told me. He told me flat out that when he went to see her, she felt she was in love with this dude. She was in love with him, and Kim told me out of his own mouth. That he couldn't stay over because she kept on telling him, "Oh, stay, stay over, papi, stay over, stay over, Kim, stay over." And he said that he didn't want to because she wa she was overweight, she's short, walks with a waddle. And I said, "Wait a minute, Kim." <laughs> I said, "Wait a minute, Kim. You mean to tell me you haven't had a woman in eight years, and the first woman that comes across your um your 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 uh, your basically your your you know your bubble." To give you choke, you're gonna deny it? Yeah, that's come crazy. on, come on, Kim. That's crazy. Netflix, I would have I, I would have I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do nothing like that, Fix. I didn't do nothing like that. But I think to tell you the truth, I think he did something with that. Oh hell yeah. I think he definitely did something with that. But I'm he he out of this conversation. <laughs> he, I hey, think, bro, I hey, think, man, we listen, are talking about Kim here now. So I think he did I think he I think he did something with that, but he's too embarrassed. He probably to, ate that chocha with a lot of hair on it. <laughs> he probably listen. I I think that he actually did oh. something with that, but he's embarrassed. He's embarrassed to say anything, <laughs> and the fact that Truth Teacher is trying to stop himself from hearing this probably tells me that I'm on the right path. He didn't listen. He never told me anything about sleeping with Sophia. I don't know nothing about. Yeah, that. yeah, we got him. We uh, got him. Yeah. Holy shit. No, we got so, him. You mean, you, you mean to tell yeah, me, man, Mister Mister no, Mr. No, Captain no. Savit of the world? You see, folks. Folks, you never had see, that conversation. You see, folks. You see, folks. Um, we gotta understand that I was in the middle, folks. I was in the middle, <laughs> and. And she was just, you know, you know, like, you know how usually I like it in the middle, folks. I was in the middle. So fear was, you know, you, you know, in, in the porno, you know, she was, she was in the front, and Mr. BBC was in the back, folks. Mr. BBC was in the back. <laughs> I don't know nothing about that. Like, listen, on, on the real. I think I think that's a confession. I don't know, Andrew. What do you no. think? I think that's a confession, Andrew. Neither one of them, neither one of them ever said anything like that to me, so I ain't even going there. That's a confession. Like, true, my shit. Come on, true. Listen, true. don't hey, try to you, you teach the truth, right? That's the truth right. Does the set truth. you free, my brother. And that's why I'm not letting this little roundhead motherfucker drag me in his messy shit. No, I, can, no, I, no. I, I control you. I control you, real man. I, I control, control you, man. You. <laughs> you know the truth. Listen, <laughs> listen. I don't drink. I don't take my ambiens with liquor anymore. You can't control me. <laughs> I don't know. Well, let the people decide. Let you the people listen. decide. You let, let the listen. The people want to know. Let, let, let the, let the listen. The people will decide. Okay, based on you what your answer, based on what your answers are. Yourself, don't teacher, you, you teach the truth based you on your answers. You. Based on your yeah, answers, the yeah, people the truth, will decide. Brother. The people we know will the decide. Truth. Come on, brother. He did, he did that salsa with taco in that chocha, didn't he? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> if Sophia comes out and says something, then that's. <laughs> but they, neither one of them ever had that kind of conversation. And I'm not. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to think about either one of them with their clothes off, so I'm not even letting my mind wander down that lane. Mm. All right, um, you know that's understandable, bro. That's understandable. Um, Listen, I'm a but, freaky bitch, but hey, did I'm it, did it, did it, I heard uh, Antonio try to hit that too at one time, didn't he? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that uh, I'll talk about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She had, yeah, the, yeah. Receipts. She had the receipts. He was, you know, trying to push up on that and. She <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Wow. He didn't want yeah. no parts of it. He didn't um, want no parts of it. Uh she didn't want no parts he of him. Want no parts of him. Oh damn. Uh, 
Mr. Rico Suave, Mr. Spain himself. Yeah, um, man. He uh she didn't want no parts of it, you know what I mean? Damn, don't she want to be don't she don't she want to feel full Spain, man? <laughs> Listen, apparently, apparently to her, she had she has some standards, uh, you know, surprise, Ooh. surprisingly, surprisingly, maybe if he was more European, like maybe she would, uh, you know, gave him the chance. But so wait a minute. So her standards was Kim? I guess so. Oh, shit. Uh, no. now, let me tell you something, man. Yeah. Like, any, any chick uh, no. yeah. Over Kim. Any chick is gonna accuse me over Kim, I'll commit suicide, bro. Well, you better start, you better start killing yourself now. Because yeah, no, let me start. 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 Bro. Let me start. <laughs> <laughs> on the real though, like honestly, I've never heard anything from either one of them. I just know that they had a falling out, bro. I, look, first of all, look how how look how media trained truth teacher is becoming, yo. I know, right? You, you can tell. You can tell he knows something. Oh, he God, he God. knows yeah. the truth. Yeah. He Listen, knows the truth. Me. Uh -huh. They need said anything to me. Bro, throughout this whole interview, you've been media trained and just, you know, you were soft shooing this whole time, bro. You <laughs> know <laughs> the <laughs> truth. <laughs> A messy bitch and you live for drama. Yes, I do. Yes, I fucking do. Yes, I That's fucking do. No, no, but um, but um, yeah, no, you you do sound like you know something, bro, that you don't want to say, but it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. It's all, nah, it's all good, bro. It's all good. I'm not gonna put shit out there, you know. Listen, I'm not gonna gossip, you know. I don't know. It's a, I will listen. Just tell me. Just tell me. I let the people know. Just tell me. I'm yeah. telling you. I don't listen. To hey, you. truth. I have. Truth. No I heard. I heard he swings thing. both ways, though. Is that true? But listen. Even if I did know something, I wouldn't say. it. Cause I mean, like I wouldn't cross that line. Ah, uh, <laughs> boo, boo, That's boo. Right. I'm you to boo. Bed. Even no. if if they told me something in confidence, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trash it out. Boo here. this man! Boo this man! Boo! <laughs> See, I got my own mind. I stop. I stopped taking candy from you, so you can't control me anymore. God. Damn it! Last time you fucking told me those were mints, and I was fucking riding unicorns and shit. Yup. <laughs> yup. Last who, time. Who who knew who knew you could uh, you could uh, confuse him with urinal uh, with urinal pucks and telling him that that was mints? I'm telling you, yo, you'll start you'll start hallucinating. I'm telling you, bro. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> going over the rainbow. <laughs> no, the whole shit. I, I gave him some ecstasy. Oh. I gave him some ecstasy, and then Truth Teacher was like, "Who makes this Mitsubishi? What the fuck?" And then I found out he took two, and I said, "Bro, that's too much." He's like, "What you mean?" I'm like, "You're gonna die. I gotta go." No, let me stop. Let me stop. Oh, um, <laughs> oh, wow. nah, nah. Back in the back in the '80s, Truth Teacher was a wild boy. He was he was part of that cocaine cowboy era. I didn't true, true. Hey, truth you used to you used to be in the gang. No, I wasn't in the gang. The shower, he was part of the shower posse, bro. Yo, I heard you were wearing little leather straps. And you had the knives and shit. Come yeah, on. he was part of the hey, bro, bro, bro. He was part of the shower posse. You know the the Jamaican uh the Jamaican gang. He was part of the oh, shower posse. Shit. Yeah, I know, I know about him. I know about him. Nope. Yeah, yeah, he was part of the shower posse. Yeah, I did, I did my share of wild shit when hey, I was. What do, you, what, do you, what do you say to the men's them over there? You're like, eh, boy, you not belong in them party. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> listen, 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 I got away with murder because I got it. I had a baby face. Yeah, whatever. Listen, listen, listen. Um, I'm gonna have to go, bro, because I've been. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yo, I'm gonna wrap it up too, man. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys for being on here. First of all, yeah, thank no you doubt. All. Thank, no thank doubt. You on the show. Um, those of y'all want to go ahead and check out Truth, the Truth. I'm sorry, did I say the truth? Truth Teacher 2007. I got the link description below, and also Radical Latino. Check out my channel. Check out my playlist, people. I got all the good shit is in my playlist. Yeah, um, you know, um, Truth Teacher. This whole time he was a uh, media train. You know, soft showing his ass off, but it's all good. Um, <laughs> Whatever. 
<laughs> um, you know, I'm a messy bitch. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a free Zach. So, um, I'll so like, any any kind words that you want to say? Any advice to people who are acting like him? No, no. To, to be honest, um, I don't know what Truth Teacher is gonna say, but to be honest, listen, um, guys, it's not that hard to talk to women. Trust mm. me. I'm not saying that I'm an expert, but I've been around the block a lot of times where I feel comfortable talking to a woman just like anybody else. You know, it's mm. like I don't I don't get in my mind too much, and I don't see them as. Oh shit, she's a woman and she's hot. No, I'll be like, all right, she's a regular person just like me. That's how you got it too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. don't get don't put don't get yourself too much hyped up um in your head and psych yourself out. Um, they're regular people. Um, if you are seeing yourself that you're lacking the mouthpiece uh to talk to women, um try to see uh, seek uh you know advice, try to go on YouTube, but don't hate, don't revolve mm. around don't revolve yourself around hate, 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 hate. Because then you're going to end up like a sad individual, like the person that we're talking about now, yeah. who uh, puts that negative energy into the universe. And the universe, the, yeah, the universe returns that negative energy back into different ways. Look, he has a bunch of falling outs. Uh, his fa his family doesn't like him to the point where now he he's living in a garage in his family's house. He doesn't have his own house. He doesn't have his own. He lives with his parents. You know, mm -hmm. um, he doesn't know how to talk to. So all that negative energy that he's putting out there for ten plus years, he's getting that fold. Uh, you know, more fold. You know what I mean? So, um, that's my best advice I could give people. Um, try to live happy. Try to uh. Try to see your shortcomings and try to see if there's a way to fix it. Um, now, would you guys both try to reach out to him again? I won't. Try to help him? I won't. No. It's not, it's not up to me to reach out to him. I mean, if anything, it would have to be him contacting me and apologizing for what he did. And, you know, because here's the thing. You know, over the years, I've made it clear to him that, listen, man. Your delivery is really fucking sloppy and it hurts people. It hurts people like me because when I go out in the world, I mean, listen, it's so bad. I can't go on internet forums because as soon as people find out that I'm a person of African descent, it's done for, it's a wrap, mm -hmm. you know? And because of that negative narrative that's out there and people like him feeding it, you know, the last straw, was that video that he made about Antonio. I got on the train and I went up to the Bronx to show people the truth. And then, you know, when, okay, so I'm, we got to talk about that three-way. I pretty much made up my mind that, you know what, um, I'm letting go of this association. Um, at home, minding my own business, the phone rings. It's Kim. <clears throat> you got to talk to Rad. I'm like, talk to Rad about what? He's got to do something about Antonio. These people are trying to, these people are after Antonio. They're doxing him. You got to talk to Rad to do something to stop this. And I'm like, what? I'm like, dude, Antonio is suffering the consequences of his own actions. Rad didn't do anything about this. Mm. Rad cannot control this. Yes, he can. I'm like, no, he cannot. I'm like, Antonio, you know the kind of person that he is. And he went and he made this video and that shit jumped off of YouTube onto other platforms. This shit went global. Yeah, it did. There are people? <laughs> I saw that world. shit on World Star. I was like, "Oh shit!" There are people in this world who are emotionally disturbed, and that shit came up in front of somebody who's not wrapped too tight, and they know how to do this shit, and they doxed him. Yep, they doxed. That, they doxed. They doxed Antonio, and they doxed Kim. Because they, they, they got Kim they like two days later. Yeah, they like. they doxed him a couple of days later, and then Kim Kim calls Truth Teacher to tell him for for me to stop whatever, and then Truth That's Teacher calls 
calls me right back, and then I I go put him on three way. And with, then with Anthony, I mean, like he called me up. Well, I was surprised because he wasn't even calling for himself. He was calling on the behalf of Antonio. And I'm like, what? I thought I thought this wasn't your friend. Why are you so, so concerned about Antonio? And this goes back to the whole, you know, being disingenuous. You know, it's like when I asked you, why are you Antonio? Why are you being friends with? Oh, I'm not his friend. Well, I guess in hindsight, he really was true. He really wasn't a friend. Um, but he's calling me and I'm telling him, you know, he's convinced that Radical, first of all, that Radical had something to do with this and that he had the power to change it. I'm like, dude, are you? No. I'm like, he had nothing to do with this. He has no control over this. And so, you know, I called Rad. I was like, yo, like, I mean, because this shit was so crazy. I was like, yeah, yeah and, and, and like, yo, call him up, you know. Yeah, I told, I told, uh, I told Truth. I said, call him up, because I was at this point, I was completely done, one hundred percent done. I said, uh, bro, call, call him up, because at this point, uh, Kim already did the video about Antonio saying that he wasn't racist. You know, this is what you guys deserve, and all this other stuff. So at this point, I was completely a hundred percent done, and I wow. said, I said, you know what? I'm gonna say all my grievances that I have against him. And I'm going to test his manhood. And guess what? He, I ended up catching him in a bunch of lies. He ended up failing his, the manhood test because he wasn't man enough to actually admit, you know, the things that he did. Because um, at a certain point, I was getting in his ass, pause, so hard, pause, that, <laughs> no, I, not for real, I was, get, I was getting in his ass. Getting it in, huh? Yeah, I was, I was going in. It's like, it's like yeah. Kim, it's like Kim was in the middle, folks. No, let me stop. <laughs> um, um, I was, I was getting in his ass. <laughs> I was getting in his ass. So fucking crazy, pause, um, that he started to revert the same way how he trolls these people that he goes on live streams. He started to say, Calm down, sir. Calm down. Right? Right, Truth? Remember that one? Calm, one down. Part? Calm down. Yeah, yeah. He was like, calm down, sir. Calm down. And I and I bugged the fuck out. And I told him, don't fucking treat me like I'm one of these people that you're trying to debate. I'm like, Eric Javier Romo. Do not fuck. And then he goes, that's that's not that's not, not that's not my name, folks. That's not my name. And then Truth Teacher over here, he goes, Eric, stop lying, Eric. You know that's your name. Stop oh, lying, Eric. Shit. And then, and then, and then, like you can hear Kim is like, "Fuck," and I'm like, "You live in Maryland." I saw uh, you. Go, you got docs, bro. What the fuck now, is wrong I'm, with I'm you? A, I just want to cut you off and say this real quick. Now, I found out about the whole doxing because I had a like a uh, a secret person that knew me, and I had beef with Kim in the past. And they sent me the information. I was like, yeah. "Oh shit!" It started. It started right off of um Reddit in um in Antonio's thing. When Antonio's stuff stuff got started going viral, they started to get everybody associated to Antonio. That's why Rican Dalfia changed. Rican Dalfia changed his name on YouTube and took all his videos down. That's wow. when. That's when um other people around uh. Antonio that he was bigging up They ended up changing their names or just Taking all their videos down Um Kim on the other hand didn't Think he would get affected when he Did that video when he did that Video that's when it Hit reddit that same thread That what they were idiot. When they were doxing when they were doxing Antonio that same video Popped up right there and said yo this is One of Antonio's associates What an idiot it, it, took, it took them less than five hours to find out who the fuck he was What an idiot Why yeah. would he do that It was a hot mess <clears throat> And um, And he and Kim really Thought that I was able to stop this shit What the fuck you want me to do You can't do nothing about it That shit exactly. is viral wait, wait, What you want me to do make a video <laughs> Make a video is to say Hey uh, Antonio and Kim They're not that racist 
You're, they're the least racist people on YouTube. Well, get the fuck out of here. I'll be lying. Hell no, I'm not doing that dumb shit. You stupid. Yeah, because what, what the hell? That would just discredit everything you just stand for. Exactly. But everything apparently, according to, according to him, according to him, I'm two-faced. You know uh. what I'm saying? I'm, according to him, I'm two-faced. Well, I, I think probably thought that I was being two-faced too. But I mean, listen. Um... Yeah, you well, you called about uh, you called his name out. You were like, "Yo, Eric, you kind of, you kind of." He was listening. Here's the thing. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that was the golden opportunity to squash whatever beef. That's true. Was there? He didn't yeah. take it. He no. bitched up. He bitched up, bro. It was he... the opportunity to squash it. what whatever because I mean, you know, like I I listen to his rhetoric all the time, and you know, it was always a sticking point, and I guess maybe that was. Part of the reason he started pulling away from me because you know his whole thing is about latin american countries and they relate to each other and and i'm like dude you don't understand what rad is talking about he's got a point there he's not talking about latin america he's talking about the situation here and the fact that given the fact that Black and Latino people live in the same neighborhoods and are facing the same challenges. They do have to put their own personal differences to the side and work together to address the common issues that they're both having. That's mm -hmm. valid. He is completely focused here in the United States. He's not talking about international relations back in latin america and which country relates to which country that's not his focus can i ask you something truth yeah i got a question i might have an answer <laughs> he's got a so-called problem with the black men going overseas and just paying for let's just say prostitutes right like european men do as well in yeah. large amount of numbers but he doesn't cover that or Cuba Dave. He doesn't do his history on Cuba Dave. Mm -hmm. But we talked about that earlier. But my question is this. If he cares so much about the women in the Dominican Republic. I never ever hear him talking about a solution and a plan to where we can stop sex tourism. I never hear him talk about, well, maybe we should talk to the mayor or the governor or somebody that's in control I think of it's, that area. I think it's because it's too e it's more easier to complain than to find solutions. Listen, the, the thing is that he's not on YouTube with the intention of helping anybody. He's just here to vent. And like I said before, sure. angry at the whole world. It's not just black traveling men that's just one aspect but that's the one that stick it's like he's out there throwing shit and it's like okay let me see which one stick oh that doo doo diaper that's the one that stuck so that's the one we're going to focus on and unfortunately black traveling men did something that all the other communities he went after didn't do they paid him attention mm. So they gave him life, actually, when you think about it. They yeah. gave him life. Yeah, but anyway, bro, listen, I got to go, Brent. I got to go. All right, um, yo, Radical, appreciate you being on the show. Yeah. Teacher, if okay. you got to go, that's cool, too. Or if you want to talk a little bit more, that's up to you. Yeah, Um. but I'm, well, thank you. Thank you. Can go to sleep. He, you know, he got to have his warm milk and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you know, you know what I mean. Um, but but thank you, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, right, was, you know, shout point. out to you, Andrew. Uh, and Truth, shout out, shout out to you. Uh, thank you for having me. I hope, I hope we uh we clarified a couple of things. You know, I hope we actually uh brought some enlightenment into this um conversation and this whole dynamic that it that that it has to do with Kim. You know what I mean? I hope uh yeah. we actually you know understand a little bit more about the twisted mind of this narcissistic uh you know autistic individual you know um but you know bipolar. it is yeah by yeah <laughs> bipolar. yeah um but it is what it is um anyway um i'm gonna catch everybody later peace all right radical peace right. you know and um the one thing that i would like to say is 
You know, just going back to what I said before, mm -hmm. we as people of the African diaspora have to take control of our image and our narrative. And, you know, we can be angry at someone like Kevin. And listen, Kevin is not the only one. Right. You know, there's more You're absolutely people right. People out there now, you know? Right. We can be angry at these people all we want. But like I said before, African proverb, if there's no enemy within, there can be no enemy without. That's true. Don't expect anyone to respect you or big you up if you're not doing it to yourself. But so, can, I be, can I ask you this, though? Because I've noticed that most of the African Americans that he does target... To be quite honest with you, they're really they're really not responding back to him. It's only like a small margin. It's not yeah. a big margin of them. Yeah. But you know, like I said, um, let's face it, I mean, we all, all of us we have a hard time, people of the African diaspora, whether we be Afro Caribbean, Afro American, Afro Latino. Um but specifically to my African-American brothers and sisters, you have to love yourself. Stop this bullshit tearing each other down. Listen, there is no community on the face of this, and I'm speaking from experience. I've traveled the world. There ain't nobody that's better than you. Hmm. Everybody's got their shit. Maybe they don't have the same problems that you got, but they got problems. Yeah. Their ice is not colder. Their sugar is not sweeter. Their water is not wetter. Mm. You looking at them, maybe you only got one fucking leg and you look at them and they got two good legs. So you think that, you know, they got all the shit going on, but they're missing an arm. Mm. They're missing an eyeball. Mm. The grass is not greener on the other side. It's just another shade of green. Preach. So this shit that you have to trash black women, black women are no good. You need to go someplace else to find a good woman. No, no, there is nobody better. It's just different. That's what I, I said. I said it a lot too. I said that a lot because I travel a lot and I said it to the fellas. I said, listen, if you think the girls in foreign are any different from the girls in America, one women. thing I've learned is that they both have one thing in common, and that's money. Money. At the end of the day, <laughs> women are women. Exactly. Where? It don't matter where they at. They're all the same, bro.